Sports Network. Catch the best games from Bucks and Mercer County at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. From Monsignor Nolan Field on the illustrious campus of Notre Dame High School, it's the game of the year in Mercer County as the West Jersey Football League Capital Division Championship is on the line tonight as the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs travel to Notre Dame High School to go up against the Irish of Notre Dame. The Irish enter tonight at 8-0, a chance to improve to 9-0 on the season and a chance to have a undefeated season for the first time in over 10 years. The Irish riding eight straight victories entering tonight and looking to avenge a tough loss in this same exact game a year ago. The Bulldogs victorious, 53 to 21, behind their then senior quarterback, Tim McEwen, a four touchdown performance in that one, a dominant performance for the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs, and the Irish looking to avenge that here tonight on their home turf, as it is a pink out and the best game of the year in Mercer County here tonight on the WBCB Sports Network. A pleasant good evening, everybody, alongside Joe O'Gorman. My name is Mike Warren. Pleased to be with you, as always, for Friday Night Lights here on the WBCB Sports Network. Tonight's game is brought to you by Team Toyota, Notre Dame High School, the Cade Motor Company, All Cure Spine and Sports, the New Jersey Education Association, the Revere Restaurant, Alderman Ford Subaru, the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, the Capital Health System, the 12th Man Touchdown, Club of Mercer County, Jammer Doors and Windows, The Trentonian, The Italian People's Bakery, and Hyundai of Trenton, all proud to bring you today's coverage here on the WBCB Sports Network as we welcome Joe O'Gorman into our Trentonian pregame festivities. Joe mentioned it a number of times, the game of the year here on WBCB, the game of the year in Mercer County. Everybody who is anybody who has covered Mercer County football this year knows that this is the game to watch, and anybody who's been covering this season is here tonight for the most part. It's going to be a great turnout and it should be a great affair between these two teams. Yeah, every now and then you get a game that gets the game title to it. And this is definitely one of the games in, Mer in Mercer County this year. This is it. You know, you got these, both these teams have a lot of high powered offenses. Notre Dame scores in the 40s. Uh, Hopewell Valley gets, is up around the high 30s, so it should be a shootout. But the thing, Mike, is every now and then when you get expect a shootout, it ends up being a defensive struggle. So it could be interesting today with these two teams. Interesting indeed. When you talk about the Irish of Notre Dame, we mentioned the undefeated record. They are an offensive juggernaut, and they average well over 45 points per game, riding three straight wins where they've outscored opponents over 150 points to just 40-something points. It's been impressive to say the least, and it all starts with the quarterback in A.J. Serace and the big bell cow back in Gabe Winowich, both of which, of course, committed to Rutgers University. How do they keep their success going tonight, Joe? Yeah, well, you know, you got Serace, who has over 5,000 yards in his career here at Notre Dame. This year he's got 1440, 1,446 yards with 20 TD passes. And, you know, as we saw last week when they played Del Rand, he is very rarely off target. He plays with a lot of poise. He plays with a lot of confidence. He's not afraid to take the ball and run with it and take a hit, which is a credit to him. And then you have Gabe Winowich, who's, you know, got, what, 669 yards, and he missed the first three games of the season. So you look into that, that's two very powerful weapons. The wide receivers, you know, with uh, Michael Quinn and uh, uh, Stephanisco. Stephanisco, yeah. You know, they're two quality wide receivers, yeah. and Stefanisco, I think, had, what, three touchdowns he did. last week? He did. Our Italian People's so, Bakery player of the game from you know, a week ago, Tyler Stefanisco. And that's even with Wyatt Moore on the sidelines right. hurt. So, you know, the this team is just next man up, and, you know, the defense could play a key. You know, you have uh, Connor Rossica, who certainly was the 12th man defensive player of the week this week. He shows up every game to play. Yep. And Will Renda, you know, Notre Dame's got some uh, – some bodies out there that can uh, do some damage offensively and defensively. And, you know, we can't overlook Hopewell. You know right. what I mean? When you look at Hopewell Valley, the, the names that jump off of the page, a lot of them are new names. A lot yeah. of them are new faces. And it all starts with their quarterback 
in the middle of things, and, and really, he's done a great job filling in for Tim McEwen or replacing Tim McEwen a season later. Milan Desai gets the start under center as he has all season long, and he's done a great job leading the Bulldogs to a 6-1 and one start and putting them in a position to win the Capital Division for the second straight year, as that is on the line here tonight from Notre Dame High School. The Irish riding an undefeated record, and they here tonight in front of a near sold-out crowd. It's the pink out, the 15th year that the pink out has been going on here at Notre Dame High School. All started with Diane Wargo and the wonderful staff at Notre Dame High School, the cheerleading staff, the cheerleading coaches. You'll see the entire stadium tonight donned with pink, the pink out shirts on sale, pink lights lining the stands here in front of the Notre Dame section and just a great night for a great cause to bring awareness to breast cancer and that is exactly what Notre Dame High School has done for the last 15 seasons. This is Notre Dame's game of the year every year because they put so much emphasis on coming together as a community to bring awareness. We'll have coverage at halftime tonight. You'll get to see there will be a handful of Irish students and Irish parents that will be donating their hair to Locks of Love. They will have at least eight inches of their hair cut off at halftime. And again, this all started 15 years ago with Diane Wargo, a great initiative to bring awareness to breast cancer. So many members of the Irish community, both teaching staff and parents extended beyond have been affected by this horrible, horrible disease and horrible cancer and it's just great that Notre Dame year in and year out is able to provide some awareness and turn a positive into what is such a scary and, and dreadful disease. They've done a great job every year and year 15 they deserve just as much recognition as they do in year one. A special shout out goes out to Diane Wargo and the wonderful staff at Notre Dame High School who make events like this possible year in and year out. Really impressive stuff to see. The goalposts, the padding that protect the goalposts in either end zone donned with pink. Usually the pylons are pink for a game like tonight as well. I guess uh, we, we don't have the pink pylons tonight but a whole bunch of pink. You, you should see maybe even the officials with some pink flags. We saw that last week. Yes. It's just all a great cause, Joe O'Gorman and we're excited it, to be a part of it. It certainly is, Mike. And you know, and I, if you don't mind, I'll give you a little. This past year my wife had breast cancer oh, wow. surgery and you know right now she's hopefully on the road to recovery and you know, doing good. So I, I give a shout out to everybody who supports it. And certainly it's a great cause here for that Notre Dame is putting on. And hopefully it has the effect that they mean for it to have. That Diane, when she started it 15 years ago, wanted to see it turn into. It's certainly a wonderful night and uh, great to do. Great indeed. A great turnout as the fans continue to file in here at Walter Nolan Field from the illustrious campus of Notre Dame High School. It's the game of the year in Mercer County, and we'll have kickoff in just a few minutes. We'll take a quick break here on the Trentonian pregame show. Coming up next, it's kickoff between the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs and the Irish of Notre Dame, the West Jersey Football League Capital Vision title on the line next here on the WBCB Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation. And that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Onerfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. 
This is Angelo Weiner for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. My name is Dr. Victor Alfieri. I'm the owner here at All Cure Spine and Sports Medicine, where we have three convenient locations in New Jersey, in Hamilton, Somerset, and Monroe. Here we offer three different services and take a multidisciplinary approach. We offer physical therapy, chiropractic, and acupuncture services. We have three different doctors working under one roof, collaborating together in order to customize a treatment plan catered to what your goals are in order to help you improve your pain and function. Instead of driving around to three different places or paying three different copays, you come to one place where the three doctors will be working together to help you manage your pain and improve your function. Please don't hesitate to visit our website at www.allcurespineandsports.com where you'll see where you can make an appointment or find more information related to what your goals are. Thank you. The stage is set, a rematch from a year ago for the West Jersey Football League Capital Division Championship. The undefeated Irish put their record on the line in a rematch against the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. The captains for tonight's contest, Connor Rozica, the middle linebacker, number 52 for the Irish and for Hopewell Valley. Their captains tonight are as follows. And welcome to the 15th Alan Annual Patterson, Tom Adonisio, where we honor and support breast cancer heroes, Angel Grayson and Vlasic, survivors. Nathan Tool. All fans in attendance. The four captains tonight rise and for Hopewell Valley. Pre-game prayer and the singing of our national anthem. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, dear Lord. Be with those who are living with cancer, surround them with love, strength, and courage, and touch their hearts with hope. Journey with all those who provide care, touch their minds with understanding, and their hands with kindness. Finally, we give thanks for all those spirits who have brought joy and love into our lives. We open our hearts that we may find comfort, love, and hope in the sharing of stories and the presence of others. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The national anthem will now be sung by members of the Notre Dame Madrigal Choir. A beautiful rendition of our national anthem performed by the Notre Dame Madrigal Choir gets us set for the biggest matchup of the season in Mercer County and on the WBCB Sports Network. We'll remind you again, the captains for tonight's contest, meeting at midfield for tonight's coin toss, quarterback A.J. Serace representing the Irish along with middle linebacker Connor Rosica. 
for the Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley. Tom Adonizio, the senior wideout and linebacker. John Michael Vlasic, the senior tight end and linebacker. Luke Caldwell, the junior wideout and defensive back. And Alan Patterson, the four captains representing the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. An emotional game when you look at it from the broad view of things, Joe O'Gorman. A 53-21 victory for the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs a season ago. And a largely led now senior team, what was once a junior class a season ago, has a lot on their mind as they enter tonight's game. How do the Irish not allow emotions to get the best of them here tonight? Well, I think, you know, you got to remember that last year they had come into that game having won five straight over Hopewell Valley. Hopewell Valley got them and they got them good. So they're coming back with a little bit of uh, an attitude, shall we say, sure, to sure. You know, come in and uh, do some damage. But on the other side, Hopewell Valley's a very, very good football team. You know, this quarterback, uh, Milan Desai, has stepped in this year and he's, he's looked like he's got two or three years experience. You mentioned John Michael Vlasic. He's a star on both sides of the ball for Hopewell Valley. You know, and I'm sure... Uh, a little pun would be, you know, he'll try to keep the Irish in a pickle. That's for sure. <laughs> John so, Michael know. Vlasic, a season ago, two touchdown catches yep. in that dominant victory on their home turf. They travel to unfriendly territory here from Walter Nolan Field on the campus of Notre Dame High School. The pink out for the Irish tonight as their kickoff team hits the field first. We'll get to see the Irish defense as we start this one tonight. Back to receive for Hopewell Valley. Looks like Luke Caldwell, one of the men back there, along with fellow captain Alan Patterson. Yeah, Caldwell's been the return man all year on kickoffs and punts. And, you know, he could be a little dangerous back there, so. Swiatek to boot things away. Kevin Scarborough on the sideline for now. Swiatek seems ready, as does the kickoff team for the Irish. Long walk and now a run towards the ball. It's off the right foot and booted deep into Hopewell territory. Fielded inside the 10. This is Langle across the 25 and down right there as he's brought down by a handful of Irish defenders. And first in on the stop Tackle for Notre Dame looked like Liam Wheeler. Wheeler for the Irish. So first and 10 for Milan Desai and the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs from their the own 26 yard line. Be interesting to see if they want to keep it on the ground or they want to put it in the air right away here. Desai breaks the huddle. Ball spotted on the hash closest to the Notre Dame sideline. First and 10, a back to his left. Looks like Yasher, man in motion. He'll give it on the ground. This is right side. And a big stop right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Gabe Winowich gets in there. Ben Decor on the carry that time. Not Yasher that was getting the carry. Decor for about a yard. Second and a long eight, maybe nine. It'll be about eight. Decor's got 772 yards, so he can grind it out a little bit. Owen Langle at the top of the screen. They'll give it back to Decor, and he's met after a three yard carry. That'll bring up second and about six, or third and about six, excuse me. Decor met by number 51. Looks Will like Will Napier able to get in there for the stop. Third down. And here comes the first third down of the night. Third down along four to go for Hopewell Valley. We'll see what Milan Desai and the offense come up with here. It's going to be another key today is third down conversions, Mike. Decor Possession. To the left of the side, Decor takes it, sweep, right side, looking for the edge. He's stuck by Bailey. He'll be near the first down marker. He's got it by a yard and a half. It'll move the, the sticks, and it'll first be a first down, down and Bulldogs 10 for the Bulldogs. By ben Decor. Strong I think they carry from Decor that time. I think time. decided they want to keep it on the ground for a while. I don't blame him. Huh? It's worked to this point. They've gone side to side, and they've been able to stretch out the Notre Dame defense to move the sticks. Luke Caldwell, the receiver at the top of the screen. This is Langle coming in motion. Play action, they'll screen pass to Langle left side, but he's met. Andy Zigbo with a big tackle for a loss. That'll bring up second and 12 after the tackle for a loss of two by Zigbo. Huge play. Zigbo saw that right from the start. 
and Hopewell didn't get the block out there on him that they needed, and he was right there to make the stop for a loss. It's going to bring up second down, a long 12 to go. Kill Commons, the DN for the Irish. He switches sides of the field now with Will Renda and Winowich. Desai in the gun, still with Decor to his left. Play action, bootleg towards the Irish sideline. Desai going deep, has a man. It is batted out of the air. Michael Quinn on the pass coverage as he was riding stride for stride with Owen Langle, the intended receiver, deep into Irish territory. The Bulldogs wanted to go, but Michael Quinn channeling his inner receiver at safety and batting that one away. This is third and long for the Bulldogs. Langle had a step on him, but Quinn got his hand up there just as the ball came in and knocked it away. It was a good play. Third down and 12 to go for the Bulldogs. Irish looking for their first stop of the night and to get off the field. 10.04, clock stopped after the incomplete pass. Two receivers to the bottom, Desai looking. Right side, complete. Langle slips a tackle. Has room, he's tackled close to that line to gain. We'll see where they mark it. He's right at that line to gain. Number two. And we'll Owen see if they'll give him the first down. This is gonna be close. Yeah, that might be a measurement. Oh, he gave him oh, the first down. They're gonna give him the first down, wow. It's 49. For the wow. I'll tell you what. He was tackled, Owen Langle, that was, right in front of us here in the broadcast booth and looked like fourth and inches from our vantage point. Nonetheless, first and ten. Sweep left side, Decor with space. A gain of 12 on the sweep to the left side. Musa Kamara in on the stop with a couple of Irish, Irish with a couple of other Irish defenders. First and ten for the Bulldogs. The ground game working. Nice ten-yard pickup there by Decor on the wide side, the left side of the field. First and ten. Milan Desai. They go back to Decor. He lost his footing, and he'll be stopped right around the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Will Renda in on the stop. 9-12 and counting here in quarter number one. Ball spotted on the 39-yard line in Notre Dame territory for the Bulldogs. Desai takes a long look over to the sideline and gets the play call. He breaks the huddle. Methodical drive to this point for the Bulldogs. Tom Walsh and his offense looking good so far. Desai with pressure. Steps up. Kill Commons on the chase. Splits a man. Desai barreling forward. It's a gain of 11 and enough to move the chains yet again. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs as the ground game, even when it's not designed, paying positive dividends for Hopewell Valley. No huddle now for the Bulldogs. Two receivers set to the bottom of the screen. It's Langle. In the slot, they'll sweep it to Decor, right side with blockers, Vlasic in front, Decor with the edge, he's brought down awkwardly by Musa Kamara, and here comes the flag. Yeah, for a horse collar. Horse collar tackle yeah, against Musa Kamara, and the coaches for the Irish just very beside themselves, is upset with Kamara on that tackle, got inside the pad frame. That's tough. Penalties and turnovers are going to be. You get in a game like this, Mike, a big game like this, penalties will kill you. Half the distance to the goal, first down, goal to go for Hopewell Valley from the Notre Dame nine yard line. This drive has been everything they've wished and more for Hopewell Valley. The Bulldogs, first and goal into the red zone. Desai under center. Offset eye formation, Decor takes it right side, crashing Razika, the first to get there, Winowich finishes the tackle, but Connor Razika, the middle linebacker, had that one snuffed out from the start. He had a shoelace and he wasn't letting go. <laughs> a great tackle from Razika, brings up second and goal. Ball remains at the Notre Dame nine yard line, under eight minutes and counting, 7.50 and change. Desai breaks the huddle, he'll go under center again, offset eye. Vlasic the tight end, he's to the right. Offset eye, play action, bootleg left. Desai rolling, still looking, has no one, he'll take it himself, lunging forward, he's tackled inside the five, down around the one. That's gonna bring up third down and goal for the Bulldogs, and they're gonna go with some tempo here, no huddle. Cameron Bailey for the Irish. 
Irish unable to get a substitution on. Goal line formation. They go quarterback sneak. Desai up the middle. Is he in? He is. The officials are meeting. He's short. Fourth down and goal. Now there was a fumble there. The Irish picked it up. Wow. A fumble on the field is called and recovered by the Irish. First down and 10 for Notre Dame. And I believe that ball was recovered in the end zone. It's a touchback for the Irish. Wow. Ball recovered in the end zone for the Irish. They'll start. I don't know who came up with it, who forced it, but somehow, some way, Notre Dame first and 10 from their own 20 yard line on what was about to be third and goal on a tush push formation from the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. The ball comes loose and the Irish come up with it. Somebody must have reached in there and pulled it out because the ball ended up almost in the middle of the end zone. A late addition to the I Irish offense, it's Tyreek Bryant. Bunch formation to the right. Serres takes the snap. They'll sweep it with Scipio. He's got nowhere to go. Huge tackle for a loss coming in off the edge. John Ellis. A huge tackle for a loss. A loss of five on the carry. Second and 15. See what that uh, Hopewell Valley defense has here now, Mike. Up to the task so far. A huge tackle for a loss. A big momentum play. And before this one can get going on second down, officials call time. Clock stops 6.35. I'm still trying to figure out how the fumble took place. As, as am I. <laughs> we were in the same exact location a week ago where there was a lot of confusion down there on the field, and it's starting in an eerily similar fashion, Mr. O'Gorman. Yes, it is, Mike. And we can do without chaos. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do our best to read what is going on down there on the field. Refs conferring with the Hopewell Valley sideline. Irish go quick. RPO compete. Stefanisco over the middle. Give him about Pass complete 10 or so. Uh, maybe about Stephanisco. 9 or so on the catch. That was a nice short little cut pass. A race. Stefanisco made the grab. Gain of 9. Third down and a long 6 to go for the Irish. Winowich in the backfield to the right of Serrace. Split receiver set. Two to each side. Serrace takes the snap. Looking left. Rolls out to his left. Sets the feet. Pressure in his face. Evades. Completes. Right side. This is Winowich. Well behind the line of scrimmage. Sheds a tackler, but he's got nowhere to go. Maybe a yard. And that's going to bring up fourth down and likely the punt team for the Irish. It's fourth down. I think Winowich needed to shake that one tackle that held on to him. He might have been able to get the first. And there is a flag down on the field. Flag on the play. So this Holding. is a hold against the Irish. Hopewell Valley is going to decline. The Irish will send the punt team out. Holding on the Irish. Penalty declined by the Hopewell Valley. Fourth and five from their down. own 26-yard line. And the punt team coming on. Wise decision from Coach Sean Clancy. Tom Magliazzo to boot things away. Luke Caldwell, I believe, back to return the punt. Yes, it is. Caldwell to receive. Bulldogs showing pressure. They bring a handful. Magliazzo's punt, a high-flying boot. Around the 50 takes a Notre Dame bounce. And a couple more as it rolls towards the 40, and that's where the Irish will touch it down, right at the Hopewell Valley 40-yard line, where we'll see Milan decide for the second time tonight as the Bulldogs' offense makes their way back out onto the field. But don't forget, if you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. For your daily local and national news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week, it's the Trentonian. America's paper, Mike. America's paper. <laughs> yes, it is. First and 10 from their own 40-yard line. This is Milan Desai. Vlasic in the backfield. Takes the snap, they'll go Decor. Right side, looking for space. Scipio takes the legs out, but Decor stumbles forward. A strong gain. Give him a long six. Carried by number five, Ben Decor. He's Second been the four. workhorse for them tonight. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about Dylan Yasher off the air that 
multiple back scheme so far. To this point, it's been all Ben Decor, the junior running back. A junior-led backfield between Decor and Yasher. Decor to the right of Desai in the gun. Vlasic to the tight end to the left. They'll sweep it left. Decor keeping it. Zigbo looked like he was blocked in the back. Had a chance at him. Decor lunges forward. A strong gain of 10 plus. Almost 15. Number five, Ben Decor on the carry. Good for a hope. First and down and 10. Down. The ground game continues to make their presence felt against this Irish defense. Now they're on the Notre Dame 40. From 140 to the other, the Bulldogs moving quick. They'll sweep it right side. Decor, you guessed it. Musa Kamara combining on the stop with Andy Zigbo, but not before Decor sweeps his way five, for ben nine. Pushed out of bounds on the Notre Dame sideline. This is Drop second down, down and one nine. to go. Musa Excuse Kamara, me, they'll give him 11 five, all of a sudden. Is That's enough to move the chains. One ref the had him for nine, Bulldogs. the other one had him for 11. It's a first down for the Bulldogs. They'll go back to Decor. Really quick snap that time. And a timeout taken before the snap, apparently. Timeout Irish, that's their first timeout of the half. They have two remaining. Hopewell Valley's running the ends here pretty good. Left side, right side. And the Irish defense with no answers to this point. The contain just has not been there from a defensive perspective for Notre Dame. No, the, the course had a lot of room on the left side, the far end of the field. And when he comes over here on the right side, Mikey's getting a good block or two to give him six, seven yards. It's been impressive to this point, Joe, seeing how Hopewell Valley has wanted to attack this Notre Dame defense. But if there's one thing that has remained consistent from a defensive standpoint for the Irish, you can make the argument that they are a second-half defensive squad. They, It's a cliche, but it's one that is held true for the Irish. They make halftime adjustments, to say the least. The way this thing's starting out, there might have to be a second-half team. So far, Hopewell it's Valley has seven first downs, and they've still got four minutes to go in the first quarter. Hopewell Valley, first and 10 from the Irish 29 yard line. Classic motions to the left. They'll give it back to Decor. This is to the left side. Tackled by Renda, but again, eight yards on the ground. Another strong carry as the rushing attack. We talked about the aerial attack a year ago. Over 150 rushing yards in this game for the Bulldogs last year, and they're well on their way to that again this year. Some movement up front not called, and now it is late, as it looks like Langle moved a little bit early. It's a false start against Hopewell Valley. That'll push them back false five yards. The Bulldogs. That'll push them back five yards. It's still second down. Second and seven instead of second and two now. Back to the 26-yard line. On the first drive of the night for the Bulldogs, you saw they wanted to try and take a shot downfield. Since then, haven't really seen Desai go to the air. A he's whole thrown, lot of yeah, he's thrown three passes, Mike. He's completed two, but one of them was a two-yard loss. So, second and a long seven to go for the Bulldogs. Desai design run, quarterback draw, keeps it, lunges, and he's going to be very close to that first down marker. Carried by number eight. Gain Milan of six. Desai. Second and, or excuse me, third and one now. Down. Another big third down. Ball spotted right at the 20 yard line. Pistol formation for the Bulldogs. They'll give it right side. This time it's Yasher, his first attempt. He gets the first down. Carried by number three, Dylan Yasher. Under three Going minutes down. to go in the by first quarter, and the Bulldogs continuing. The to make their way down. deeper and deeper into Irish territory. Got a couple down to the 18 now. First and 10 at the 18. Decor back into the game to the left of Desai. They'll give it to Decor. Bouncing it left. Tries to slip a defender, but he can't. Karan Woods with a big time stop. Right around the line of scrimmage. No gain. Karan Woods for the Irish. Woods Second down and eight. Play. Great play getting through there. Great play indeed, contained, set up by the defensive back, Karan Woods. Second and eight. 225 and counting. Irish looking for another red zone stop. 
Caldwell, the receiver at the bottom of the screen with Langle. It's a screen for Langle, complete. Across the 10, looking for the corner. He dives, he's in for the touchdown. Desai to Langle, 16 yards away for the score. And the Bulldogs are on the board first here tonight. Hopewell Valley picking right back up where they left off last year. They get the first lead of the night as Langle, who just scored the touchdown, is now on for the extra point attempt. In to hold, Grayson Vlasic. Hopewell Valley's come to play tonight, Mike. The Bulldogs marching their way down the field. Snap good, hold good, Langle's kick, splits the uprights, and with 2.09 remaining in quarter number one, the Bulldogs jump on top. It's seven to nothing, Hopewell Valley. No answers for the run game did the Irish defense have that time around, Joe O'Gorman. No, and then I think they surprised them a little bit with the pass out in the flat to Lengel for the touchdown. A proud sponsor of tonight's coverage here on WBCB is the 12th man touchdown club of Mercer County. The unsung heroes will be honored on November 1st at Massimo's Restaurant, 1035 Washington Boulevard, Robbinsville, New Jersey at 7 o'clock. The touchdown club proud to salute those players whose efforts go often unnoticed but are the backbone of a program. Program. The Touchdown Club will pay for two players per school at Massimo's Restaurant, 1035 Washington Boulevard in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Hopewell Valley's run 20 plays, Notre Dame three in the first quarter so far. You wonder if the Irish offensively try to take a couple pages out of the Hopewell Valley offensive playbook and maybe they try to use Gabe Winowich and Jordan Scipio to wear down this Hopewell Valley defense. Again, we always talk about and, he, and rightfully so, it's, it needs to be talked about. <laughs> A.J. Serace and, and Gabe Winowich as a pairing, but a lot of the time we talk about Serace's arm ability, the ability to put it on the numbers, guys down the middle of the field, but the ground game could aid Notre Dame Number positively 22, here tonight. Well, 7-0 to advantage Number on the scoreboard. Langle, a pooch kick right side, heading towards the sideline. Bryant fields it at the 28, looking for a seam, bouncing off a man. He loses it. Ball's on the turf, and it's recovered by the Bulldogs. They just reached in there and yanked it out, one of the football players. Don't look now, but momentum with the Bulldogs. First down and 10, Milan Desai and the Bulldog offense back out onto the field. First and 10 from the Irish 40. Right around there, they'll mark it at the 41 officially. Wow. That's tough for Notre Dame trying to get themselves started. We talked about it during the pregame, an emotional game tonight. And so far, the Bulldogs handling their emotions just a little bit better than the Irish. Try to go for a quick strike here, Mike. That could be the recipe. Desai in the gun, Decor to his left. They'll sweep it left side, Decor patiently running. Splits a defender, diving forward. He's just short of the first down marker. Gain of nine and a half makes it second and a half yard. What a run from Decor as he has picked either side of the field and found at least eight yards each time. Yeah, Hopewell Valley must have saw something on film, showed him they could run wide. And this is going to be a false start against Hopewell Valley. I believe, looked like a lot of movement up front offensively, but there could have been somebody from the Irish in the neutral zone. We'll see. Officials meeting down below. It is against the... Illegal substitution. The Notre Dame defense. An illegal substitution against the Irish. Wow, I thought I saw some movement up there, up front for Hopewell Valley, but an illegal substitution against Notre Dame, first and 10. It'll move the sticks. Down around the 27 now. It's a game of five Some yards. extra help for the Bulldogs. For Valley. As they are nearing the red zone yet again. Back to the core, right side, up the middle. Give them eight. 
I don't think the saying eight yards in a cloud of dust is a thing, but not on turf anymore, no. Turf took care of that. Eight yards per carry, the theme for Ben Decor tonight, second and two yet again. Something we've said at least five times already in this first quarter alone. A minute to go, Desai looking for the end zone, floats it up, it is incomplete. Intended for John Michael Vlasic. Passing complete, intended for number 11, John Michael Vlasic. Desai overshot Vlasic down the Peterson left the side there at the end zone. It's third down! Looked like that was Vlasic, the intended receiver, but I believe instead of Vlasic, that was number 41, Theo Ellerby. That four on his jersey was bunched up a bit, looked like a one. Third and two now. Big third down opportunity for the Irish, trying to get off the field. Third down and two yards to go. They'll give it to Decor right side. Makes a man miss. Looking for the first down marker. He's got it and then some. It's not five, eight, it's Decor five. It's enough Renda, but not before, for the first down. And first down. Ball is marked at the 13-yard line in Irish territory, first and 10. Bulldogs going quick. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Desai throwing. Barrel down in the middle. Connor Razica lays the boom. But I don't know if that play is going to count. I think it was incomplete. When the ball was snapped, the head official, Troy Stevenson, was waving his arms. And it looks like he's calling my time down there on the field. I'll tell you what. Back-to-back -back weeks, this has been awfully confusing from a refereeing standpoint. Second and ten. They'll go back to the core up the middle. Slips a man, still on his feet, getting a push from his line. Now finally brought down at the Notre Dame two. Cam Bailey will have to come off the field. He lost his helmet on that play. Another first and goal situation for Hopewell. First and goal. From the Notre Dame two, tried to go with a quarterback sneak last time. They fumbled, or two times ago that was. Desai under center looking like a quarterback sneak. They'll fake it. They'll give it to the core, but he's met. Wow. Jack Beecham. Carried by Beach. number five, Ben Decor. Brought down by number 79, Jack Beecham. Beecham gets in for the stop. The Bulldogs go quick. Bunching it up at the line of scrimmage. And quarter's over. That'll do it for quarter number one. That's the end of the first quarter. The Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. After one quarter of play, the Hopewell nothing. Valley Bulldogs on top of the Irish. Seven to nothing. You're watching the West Jersey Football League Capital Vision Championship here on WBCB. Don't go anywhere. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation. And that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, Eight. Second and goal going right up the middle for the touchdown is Milan Desai. Touchdown. An extra point down. away are the Bulldogs from making this a 14 to nothing game. A little shocking beginning here, Mike. Well, the Bulldogs had a game plan and they have stuck to it. They have executed and they have found themselves up by two scores. Langle comes on for the extra point. Now John Michael Vlasic actually on for the extra point. Good snap, good hold. Vlasic 
just blast that one through the uprights. That one probably would have been good from 50 yards away. Splits the uprights. And with 11.56 to go here in the first half, the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs, 14. The undefeated Irish of Notre Dame, nothing. That fumble on the kickoff came back to bite them. Notre Dame wonder, lost it on the kickoff. You wonder what the strategy is moving forward because Tyreek Bryant, a capable ball carrier for this Notre Dame offense, one of the rotational running backs, the senior running back for the Irish, a punt returner, the punt returner for the Irish, a pooch kick fielded at his own 28. He split a man but was held up long enough to have the ball pried out. So you wonder if Coach Sean Clancy is now telling his guys that, hey, fair catch, maintain possession, don't worry about the extra yards, let's leave that to the offense. But we will have to see as Langle makes his way back out onto the field. It was John Michael Vlasic who kicked the extra point, and it looks like it will be Vlasic to boot things away here this time around. Notre Dame's got to remember, Mike, there's still three quarters of football technically. A ton of time left, left. to play, so this Number is far from over. Michael Vlasic out to kick for Hopo Valley. Back to return for the Irish. Number two, Andy Zigbo. Zigbo, the lone man to return for the Irish. Vlasic. Looked like it was going to be him, but it's Langle. They fake it. Right around their own 30. Now across the 40 and being brought down by a handful of the Bulldogs kickoff coverage team. On the return for the Irish was Zamir Jones. And Jones a bit slow to get up. He is helped up and over to his sideline. First down and 10 for A.J. Serace in the Irish offense from their own 42. Stefanisco and Quinn at the top of the screen. Pelzer and Magliazzo, the receivers at the bottom. Winowich in the pistol formation behind Serace. Sarace gets the snap. They'll go Winowich. Cuts it back towards the middle, lowering the shoulder, still on his feet, but gets bowled down right around the 48-yard line. Gain of six on the carry for Winowich. It'll bring up second and four. That was a good pickup by Winowich. He just barreled his way right through the middle of the line. A tough runner to bring down Gabe Winowich. Pelzer in the slot at the bottom of the screen. They'll fake Winowich, they'll go Serace on the keeper, right side. He's got the first down and a little bit more as he's pushed out right at the 45-yard line in Hopewell Valley territory. Serace keeps it for about nine. It's a first and 10 for Notre Dame. Nice seven-yard gallop there he got. Serace in the gun, trips to his left. Magliazzo, the lone receiver at the bottom. They'll go Winowich. Delayed carry up the middle with the seam. Winowich still on his feet, brought down around the 22-yard line. It's first and 10 for the Irish as their bell cow back. Gabe Winowich almost found Paydirt. A huge run up the middle of 20-plus for Gabe, and it'll move the sticks. Johnny Ellis come in and made the tackle for Hopewell. Trips to the left again, same formation for the Irish. Back to Winowich they go. Left side, barreling his way forward, tackled around the 15. Strong carry of six for Gabe Winowich. Second and four. Brought down by number 22, Luke Caldwell for Hopewell Valley. Caldwell comes in on the stop. Winowich needing a breather. Scipio into the game, so race. Brief huddle, Scipio in the pistol. Split receiver set, Pelzer and Magliazzo at the bottom. Delay, carry, Scipio, a seam, up the middle. He's down inside the five, could smell the end zone, but collapsing on the stop was Jude Berman saving the touchdown. First down and goal for the Irish, deep inside Hopewell territory at their own four yard line. Serace breaks the huddle quick. Scipio remains in. Split receiver set. Stefanisco and Quinn to the top of the screen. Serace takes the snap. They'll go Scipio. Right side. Makes a man miss. Lunges for the goal line. He's going to be marked short right around the one. That's going to bring up second and goal. One yard to go for the Irish. Winowich. Thought he was going to get in there. Seemed like he had a chance. Winowich back into the game along with Liam Kilcommons. Irish keeping the tempo. Gabe Winowitz to the left of Serace, takes the snap. Serace keeps, goes forward, he's in, but there's a flag. Touchdown, Irish. This one's going to be against the Irish, I believe. Flag on the play. I'm not sure if everybody was set for the Irish up front. 
And again, no real indication of what the call is from the officials down on the field. It is utterly impossible to tell from up here. In Offsides Hopewell. Offsides on Hopewell Valley. And that should be a free play and a touchdown, but it's not. We should be looking at the Notre Dame extra point team coming on here, but for some reason the Irish will have to go for it again after an offsides call where they scored a touchdown. Back to Saray. Same play. Makes a man miss. This time reaches the ball across. He's in. Ball comes loose. Confusion on the field. One ref showing touchdown. Two refs showing touchdown. That's enough for a touchdown call. 14-6. 9.41 remaining, and the extra point team is going to come on here for Notre Dame. I'll tell you, Joe O'Gorman, <laughs> binoculars aren't enough to help you figure out what is going on from an officiating standpoint tonight. This is something. Magliazzo on for the extra point. He's there for the hold. Scarborough for the kick. He splits the uprights. The extra point is good. 9.41 remaining in the first half. It's 14-7 as the Irish cut the deficit in half. Sarace gets the job done with his legs, but Gabe Winowich, the bell cow back, marches them right down the field. He had two big runs in that drive, Mike, that just kept it going. A huge response from the Irish offense. Started at their own 42, marched right down the field, and scored with 9.41 remaining in the first half. It's time to view the world through Jammer Doors and Windows, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees in 1920. And today, Jammer continues to swat home run sales service and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, storm doors, and windows. Jammer Doors features Rainer Garage Doors, steel or aluminum, and crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors and Windows do their own work and installation using no subcontractors, saving you money. Visit their Lawrenceville showroom at 2850 Brunswick Pike and Business Route 1, the Yardley showroom, open by appointment, 215-493-7709. Swiatek on to boot things away for the Irish again. A booming kick, fielded inside the 10. Ellerby across the 15, near the 20, and he's brought down at the 19-yard line. First to get there for the it's Irish, that was Leo number Ellerby. 20, Drew Spence. A big time stop on the kickoff coverage as they get him right at the 20 yard line is where they mark it. First and 10 for the Bulldogs and we'll see Milan Desai yet again. See if the Notre Dame defense can rise to the challenge here. Hopo was in a red zone three times in the first quarter. Desai and the offense back out onto the field. Desai and Decor. The duo getting things done. They'll go decor. Right side on the sweep. Splits a man and finally brought down after a strong four-yard carry. Had to earn that one. Will Renda the first to get there. Looked like Andy Zigbo helping in on the stop along with Ryan Peterson. Second down and six for the Bulldogs. Pink out. Breast Cancer Awareness Night here at Notre Dame High School. Desai wants to throw, lets it go, deep right side, it is bobbled and dropped by John Michael Vlasic. He was all alone down the seam, unaccounted for. The throw turned him around just a bit. Yeah, he was wide open balance. right there in the middle of the field. That he was, similar to a year ago where Vlasic made his money down the seam, getting a couple of touchdown catches in this game last year. Almost had an opportunity at a huge touchdown catch there as he was all alone, unable to haul that one in. This is third down and six. Irish fans making some noise. Split receiver set, two at the bottom. They'll sweep it to Coor. Left side, he's stuck. He's well short of the first down marker. It's going to be fourth down and a long three to go. Decor fighting forward for extra yards, but he's well short. And don't look now, but the offense staying on for Hopewell Valley. Desai in the gun, trying to draw them off. 
interesting Irish defense. decision here by Dave Caldwell. The Irish defense trying to watch the ball here. They do not want to jump off sides. Fourth down and three. Irish fans making some noise. Desai gets under center. A flag is thrown. And who is it against? I think it's against the Irish based on the body language of Andy Zigbo. Line judge to the Irish side of the field through the flag. Trying to get him jump off sides. I don't. Yep. Wow. You had one ref pointing backwards towards <laughs> the opposite end zone, and the ruling on the field is offsides. It's a five yard penalty. Oh, my gosh. And a Hopo Valley first down. Man, this is one of the tougher ones for sure. First down and 10 for Hopewell Valley from their own 30 after the offsides call. Desai with pressure, steps up, escapes, but he's brought down. Winowich off the edge for the sack as he's unable to get back to the line of the scrimmage. Desai on the carry, sack by number six, Dave Winowich for the Irish. Second down and a long 10. Desai was able to get through there, but Notre Dame rose to the occasion and made the stop. 7.40 and counting here in the first half. Ellerby, the lone receiver at the bottom. Confusion for the Irish defense. A couple of unaccounted for receivers, and a flag is thrown. No, a timeout, rather, taken by the Irish. Too much confusion down on the field from a defensive standpoint the as yeah. Coach Bailey and his defense want to talk some things over for Notre Dame. That's their second that they called already in the half. And one left. The Italian People's Bakery, proud to support high school sports on the WBCB Sports Network. You can visit them at their signature location at 63 Butler Street for the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries. Drive by to smell the homemade bread made daily or have them cater your next party or affair. The Italian People's Bakery, located at 63 Butler Street, is the best place to go for the finest hoagies on Sunday afternoon and for great dessert trays as well. You can visit them once again at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg. The Italian People's Bakery since 1936. Second down and 10, Bulldogs. With it from their own 30 yard line. Desai in the gun, they'll go play action, bootleg, right side, floating it complete. Vlasic makes a man miss, and he barrels his way forward for a first down. Lowered the shoulder and goes right over Liam Kilcommons and Ryan Peterson for the first down. Hoopo's kind of moving the ball at will here, Mike. Notre Dame's got to come up with a stop. First and 10. Desai looking right, has pressure, and he's going to be sacked. Will Renda and Gabe Winowich, along with Will Napier, combining for the sack. Number 42, Will Renda, and number 51, Will Napier in on the sack. Second down and 11 for the Bulldogs. Hopefully that'll give the Irish some momentum here. And I wonder if Hopewell Valley elects to keep it on the ground a little bit more. They've gone aerial attack of late play action. We've seen a little bit more too. Split receiver set for Desai. Vlasic and Ellerby at the bottom. Irish showing blitz. They bring Bailey. Desai steps up over the middle. It is incomplete. Just Passing over the outstretched hands of Luke, Luke Caldwell. Caldwell. It's Ryan Peterson and Musa Kamara on the coverage that time. This is third and 11 for the Bulldogs from their own 41-yard line. The size been a little high on his pass. A lot of that's emotion. It's true. Sailing balls mean yep. emotion and just not getting that foot down quick enough. Third and 11. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Desai takes the snap with pressure. It's a screen. Langle, excuse me, Caldwell complete. Down the middle, across the 40, to the 35-30, tackled inside the 30-yard line. A huge hit down the middle of the field on the in-law screen from Desai to Caldwell. Plenty to move the sticks. And it's first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Just when you think the Irish have them stopped, they found ways to move the chains. That was set up nice by Desai. Dropped back, let, let the rush in. 
Just dropped it right over the middle to Caldwell. First and 10, six minutes remaining in the first half. Desai with Decor to his right. Two receivers to the top, motion, motioning Vlasic to the left, and a flag comes in before this one can get underway. It's a false start against Hopewell Valley. False That'll set him back five, five yards. Back five first down yards. at 15. 14-7 the score, under six minutes remaining in this first half here from Notre Dame High School. The undefeated Irish against the 6-1 Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley, a rematch from last year's Capital Division Championship game. The same stakes on the line here a year later. First and 15 after the false start against the Bulldogs. They go trips to the right for Desai. Decor to the right in the backfield, screen pass. Langle complete. Zigbo there. He meets him a couple of yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Give him about three, maybe four on the completion. It'll be three, and that's going to set up second and a long 12. It's second and 12. Irish sniffed that one right out real quick. Zigbo did a great job on the zone coverage, collapsing on that one. Under five minutes remaining in the first half. The Bulldogs with a seven point advantage on the scoreboard and looking for more. Second and 12. Decor to the left of Desai, trips to the bottom of the screen. Desai takes the snap, looking left. Winowich on the pressure, lets it go deep. Right side intended for a man in the end zone. Looked like Vlasic, it's Vlasic incomplete. Andy Zigbo on the coverage. Hands. It's third. Another big third down here, Mike. The Bulldogs able to convert on third and 11 with a screen pass of 30 plus yards to Luke Caldwell their last time around. We'll see what Coach Caldwell and Milan Desai can come up with here on third and a long 12, maybe even 13. Ellerby at the top of the screen, Caldwell at the bottom. Desai takes the snap, screen, right side, complete, Decor. He's bottled up right around the line of scrimmage. Razika, the first man there. Napier finishes the blow. Fourth down. No gain on that one. Threw right into the Notre Dame coverage. <clears throat> Dave Caldwell's going to keep his offense on the field for the time being. Desai over at the sideline getting the play. Biggest down of the night. Comes here with 4.01 and counting remaining in the first half. And that's the biggest down for both teams. Hopewell and Notre Dame. Irish don't want to go down two scores with just three minutes left, 3.48 left in the half. And Hopewell doesn't want to turn the ball over here and give Notre Dame a chance to come back and tie them before think, the half. You think the Irish bring any pressure here? Timeout taken on the field now. Hopewell Valley wants a little bit more time to talk some things over. Out, Valley. I'm nobody to question either one of these coaches, but you know you're going on fourth down, so I'm surprised they didn't run a little bit more. Looking for some pink out merch? Head over to the table left of the bleachers. Don't forget, fans, if you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at trentonian.com, the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's the Trentonian. Good to see the, the uh, sports editor, the commander-in-chief, if you will, for the... Uh, yep. Sports portion of the Trentonian and Kyle Franco down on the sidelines getting some great shots. Greg Johnson from the Trentonian as well down there. You can catch Greg's right up in tomorrow's edition, either electronically or the hard copy. Kyle does a Paper great job. Copy. He does a little bit. He does a lot of everything. Not yes, a little bit, a lot of everything. Saw Kyle a lot this summer hanging around the ballpark at Trenton Thunder Ballpark. It was great seeing Kyle all season long. Good to see him again here tonight. Here's fourth down and long. Desai takes the snap, drops back, looks left, lets it go. It's complete. Vlasic bounces off a man. He's into Notre Dame territory in the red zone. Down at the four. First and goal for the Bulldogs. What a connection from Desai to John Michael Vlasic. Vlasic was a little bit open and Desai got it right in there. 
What a presence. The physical tight end, John Michael Vlasic. Hauls that one in. A huge connection. Monstrous gain down the middle of the field on fourth and 12. Final three minutes of the first half and change. First down and goal from the Notre Dame four yard line. Desai under center. Decor in the backfield. They'll give it to Decor right side. Bounces it in. He's tackled by Razika. They're going to give him the touchdown. touchdown. He must have lunged across the goal line, and a late flag comes in. And this is going to be against the Bulldogs for unnecessary celebration or excessive celebration. Excessive celebration in Hopewell Valley. Still a touchdown. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bulldogs. It came after the score. Although we did see a an offsides take a touchdown off the board. Yes. Troy Stevenson, head referee, meeting with Coach Caldwell of Hopewell Valley. And looks like the extra point team's coming on. So the score will count as opposed to the one they took off the board for Notre Dame, which was later, of course, put back on when Sarace finally found the end zone. But another head scratcher. Well, I think he was in, and whatever it has, it happened after the play. Sure. So Vlasic on for the extra point. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. And it's good. Two-touchdown advantage on the scoreboard with less than three minutes in the first half. The Hopewell Valley Bulldogs leading this one 21-7. 252 remaining in the first half. A little bit of a stunner here, Mike. The Bulldogs have come out swinging in this one. Irish defense have had minimal answers on third and long, fourth and long. The ground game, once you think you finally have it bottled up with Decor, then Milan Desai starts beating you down the middle of the field on fourth and 12, and that changed the entire complexion of this one. Yeah, Notre Dame's got to figure out a way to get Hopewell off the field on third down. They've hit a several key third down plays that kept drives alive. Kick return team coming out for Notre Dame. Langle and or Vlasic to boot things away for the Bulldogs is the unsportsmanlike conduct being assessed on the kickoff. Sets them back 15 yards. And the Irish return team going to come up quite a bit. Scipio back to receive. 2.52 remaining in the first half. Number 22, Luke Caldwell to kick for Hopewell. Classic this time, a booming kick down the middle. Scipio lets it bounce once, picks it up around the 33. Tries to bounce it outside, stiff arm, but he's bottled up. Right around the 34-yard line, a return of about one yard, and the Irish will take over right around their own 34. 248 left in the clock. they got to try to get one in here before the end of the half. 248, still with a couple of timeouts for Notre Dame. And for, for the Irish, you don't have to be an exclusively passing offense with this much time. You saw what you were able to do with Gabe Winowich. We'll see what they elect to go with this time around. Trips to the bottom of the screen. It's a race. Design quarterback run, quarterback draw, still on his feet, barreling forward. He's got a first down, a gain of 11 from the tall and strong quarterback, A.J. Serace. He moves the sticks. Ball spotted at the 45-yard line. Irish going with tempo. They'll keep trips to the bottom. Stefanisco, Pelzer, and Quinn going from the quarterback and towards the Notre Dame sideline. Magliazzo at the top. 
He'll drag it out. Winowich with a seam left side. Still on his feet. Across the 35-30. 25-20. He's brought down around the 19-yard line. A huge gain from Gabe Winowich. He takes it into the red zone. First and 10 for the Irish. Winowich continuing to make defenders miss and make them bounce off of him as well. He shook off three guys on that one. 36 yards. Read option, Sarace keeps left side. He's tackled down around the 17 yard line. Give him a gain of a couple, second and eight. As we reach just about the two minute mark here in the second quarter. Winowich comes out, Scipio comes in. Irish remain in the no huddle. Magliazzo, the lone receiver at the top. They stay trips to the bottom. Scipio, as we mentioned, now in for Winowich. 145 and counting, Sarace gets everybody set. Scipio to his right in the gun. Play action. Sarace looking right. Fires over the middle. Dropped. Batted out of the air. And unable to be hauled in. Bang, bang play. On the coverage was Alan Patterson. The intended receiver was Michael Quinn. Third and nine. Thought they had that one, Mike. Great pass coverage by Alan Patterson. I think Patterson, it was in Quinn's hand. And Patterson just knocked it out. He'll get credited with the PBU on the stat sheet. Will Patterson. Third down. A long eight. Sarace, same formation. Wants to throw right side. Going for the corner. It's Quinn. It's caught. It's, it's a touchdown. One. Sarace to Michael Quinn. 19 yards away. And we're an extra point away from making this a seven-point affair with 91 seconds to go in the first half. Put it on the numbers, why don't you, A.J. Sarace? That pass was right there. And Quinn had the defender by two or three steps. Hit Quinn in stride, put it right in the bread basket. Extra point, good hold, good kick from Scarborough. 131 remaining, 21 to 14 the score. The Irish staying alive in this one as they make it a one score deficit yet again. That was something Notre Dame needed, Mike. They had an answer. The Hopewell score with one of their own. Impressive stuff. From A.J. Sarace and the Notre Dame offense, impressive stuff from Gabe Winowich. Once again, yeah, it was Winowich that got that big 36-yard run, set that whole thing up. Now, the question, Joe O'Gorman, 91 seconds remaining. How do the Irish keep the Bulldogs out of the end zone for the final 91 seconds? Well, the first problem you got, you only got one timeout left. So you can't start to stop the clock a lot. So, and you got to imagine Hopewell is going to try to keep it on the ground. They don't want to risk, I wouldn't think they'd want to risk an interception here. So you got to hope that uh, you can get the clock stopped and have a little bit of time left to try to go for one more score. Swiatek back in to boot things away for Notre Dame. Big thing here is, too, don't get Notre Dame, you know, on Hopewell's side, they want to get a little run back here. Notre Dame doesn't want to hold them, let them get, you know, 20 or 30 yards on a kickoff return. Right. Swiatek makes his approach and boots the ball away. A high, booming kick, fielded inside the 15. Looks like Langle, left side, has a seam, lunging forward, and he's brought down by a handful of the Irish kickoff coverage team. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 28. Looked like it was Langle. It was actually Jude Berman on the return. That was number 23 instead of Langle. So first and 10 from their own 28-yard line for Hopewell Valley. The Irish starting with Winowich and Kilcommons as the DNs. Renda is out there as well playing outside linebacker with Cam Bailey. Razika in the middle of all the action. As Milan Desai on the offense, back out onto the field. Dylan Yasher in the backfield with Desai. Trips to the top of the screen for the Bulldogs. Ellerby, the lone receiver at the bottom. Desai drops back. 
Checks down. This is Yasher complete. Bailey swings him down and out of bounds. After about a couple yards, maybe three. Spotted at the 31 yard line, still in their own territory. Second I would have and thought seven. Hopewell would like to run the clock out here. Set Clocks. himself in second and seven now. Clock stops at 117. That's the other thing they didn't want to do was go out of bounds. Irish keeping the same personnel on the field. Trips to the top of the screen. Vlasic the tight end. Desai, quick hitter, complete. It's Vlasic. Makes a couple defenders miss. Still on his feed. Lunging across the 35. Pass complete and across the 40 Michael down towards Vlasic. the 45-yard line was John Michael Vlasic. He's down at the 45. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs, and they want to go quick now. He's tough to bring down, that Vlasic. He is a strong fellow. Desai takes the snap. Early movement up front, not called. What a play by Jordan Scipio. He just That's stuck John, John Michael Vlasic right at the line of Jordan scrimmage. The they gave him a gain of one, second and nine. Clock continues to tick. Final 40 seconds of the first half. Vlasic a bit hobbly after that hit from Scipio. Trips to the top of the screen. Langle the top man and a timeout taken. 36 seconds timeout remaining. Bulldogs want to talk That's some things over. Taken of the half. They have one remaining. One more timeout for the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs in this first half. Second down and nine to go from their own 46-yard line. And decision time now for Hopewell Valley. Got to decide whether they want to throw deep or just run the clock out, Mike. Here's some Notre Dame fans saying they want them to rip the ball out here. You've seen a number of opportunities where the Irish have had gang tackles. There's been ball carriers for Hopewell Valley holding ball carriers up and, and trying yeah. to rip that ball out, but they just haven't been successful. And unless you're talking about that goal line opportunity earlier in this yeah, contest. Yeah, where they fumbled early. Where they fumbled it in the end zone and the Irish came up with it. We'll find out if the... Uh... Dave Caldwell's conservative or a gambler here? Second down, nine yards to go for the Bulldogs. Looks like they'll keep the same formation. Trips to the top. Ellerby, the lone receiver at the bottom. Looks like Yasher to the left of Desai in the gun. Doesn't look like the Irish are bringing pressure here. Kill Commons in coverage. Pass over the middle, incomplete. Jordan Scipio got a hand in there to break things up for the intended receiver in Ellerby. Third down, nine to go. That was close almost to a Notre Dame interception. It's third down! Third down and a long nine to go. The Bulldogs have converted on third and 11. Third and 12, fourth and 13. Now looking for one on third and nine. Yazzer to the left, Yasher to the left, excuse me. Screen pass complete to him left side. Looking for the line to gain. He's tackled out of bounds about a yard and a half short. Now two yards short. Clock stops, 24 seconds. Fourth down, four yards to go. Correction, three to go from the Notre Dame 48-yard line and the Bulldogs offense will stay on the field. This Desai. is interesting, very interesting, Mike. Trips to the top of the screen. Desai with a back to his left. It's Yasher trying to get the Irish offense to jump. Couple of hard counts. Now looks over to the sideline. And that will be the third and final timeout taken timeout by Hopewell Valley. Valley. That's their third of the half. They have none 24 remaining. seconds remaining in a one-score affair between the reigning Capital Division champs, the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs, and the undefeated Irish of Notre Dame. Bulldogs on top, looking for a last minute, now last second score before the half, trying to continue the momentum they established in quarter number one as they found themselves in front by 14 in this one. They got the ball with 124 left in the quarter, in the half. And they've run five or six plays, and we still don't have 24 seconds. I would have thought for sure they'd just get out there, take a couple shots deep, but run the clock out once they got into like third down. Irish fans, it's Fourth down and a long three to go for the Bulldogs. 
Trips to the top of the screen. Desai takes the snap. Looking left. It's Yasher. It's incomplete. Just what the Irish defense needed. A stop on fourth down. Turnover on downs. First, first and 10 for the Irish from their own 48. 21 seconds and they're getting the ball to, you know, certainly within the range where Sarace can lop one down the field. But the Irish getting the ball to start the second half. We'll see just how risky Sean Clancy and John Bacoven of this Notre Dame offense, how risky do they want to be? Empty backfield for Sarace. Trips to the top. Winowich and Magliazzo at the bottom. Sarace takes the snap, looking left side, rolls out, still pressure, evades a man, looking right, gets a block, a flag comes in late. Sarace steps out of bounds, he'll take a sack, and this one going to be set back as Andy Onzik going to be called for a crackback block as he came and blocked somebody back towards the line of scrimmage. And they are going to accept that penalty against Notre Dame. At this point, the longer you make them go, the better you are for Hopewell. And now with just 10 seconds remaining, a whole lot of time taken off of that play. Back on the 33, 15-yard penalty. Sarace comes back out. We'll see what they do this time around. 10 seconds. Might just see them try to avoid any uh, potential turnovers. But yet again, same formation for the most part. Design run. Sarace takes off up the middle. He'll lunge forward. Takes a late hit at the end of that one. And a flag comes in right at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion on Notre Dame. Well. They're going to in the, the wrong direction, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, similar to the second half of last week, it's been flags galore to end the first half this week. This is the never-ending first half. This is the longest 24 seconds I can remember. Four seconds now remaining, and... It was daylight when they had the ball at 124. We're now in <laughs> pure darkness. <laughs> and now a timeout taken down on the field with four seconds remaining in the first half. Time out on the field. Well, they did a quarterback draw. The Irish, their, with their last play call before that penalty came in. They tried to get in the locker room, just <laughs> wouldn't let them. <laughs> right. So the Irish will start with the ball to start the second half. And we mentioned it during the first half, or during the pregame show, rather. We will have halftime coverage for you here from Notre Dame High School. The pink out here tonight. The 15th year that the pink out has been in existence at Notre Dame High School. And we will have the pink out festivities of the donation of the locks for love, the haircutting down on the track. We will show all of that coverage here for you at halftime. A great evening and a great occasion to bring awareness to breast cancer here at Notre Dame High School. Irish back out onto the field. Final four seconds in the first half. So race with Winowich to his left and wonder what they're going to do here. They'll take the snap. They'll give it Winowich. Splits a man looking back the other way, and now he'll just go down right around the 36-yard line. Winowich just trying to play it safe. Gets a couple of yards on the carry, but that'll do it for the first half. As we head to the halftime locker room, the visiting Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley find themselves in front 21-14 as they lead the undefeated Irish of Notre Dame by seven at the half. Take a quick break on the other side of this timeout. It's the pink out here from Notre Dame. We'll have that coverage for you along with our first half stats and second half action here between the Irish of Notre Dame and the Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley. Again, one final time here at the half. The Irish trailing by seven to Hopewell Valley, 21 to 14. The Trentonian halftime show is next here on the WBCB Sports Network. Don't go any. This is Angela Weiner for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County student athletes the best of luck, and also urge parents to stay involved in your children's school activities. Extracurricular events are a great way to keep your sons and daughters focused, and it does not have to be athletics. 
They can be involved with the drama club, the school band, even the debate team. An involved student today has a brighter future tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the Mercer County Pro Prosecutor's Office, and I hope you enjoy today's game. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV, then visit Cade Motor Company at their new bigger location of Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville. Cade Motor Company is locally owned, and they've been there for over 40 years, and they offer over 50 hand-picked certified used cars, trucks, and SUVs. They have all makes and models, all personally inspected by the owners. You can provide your own financing, or Cade Motor Company can assist you to make your car buying experience seamless. No exorbitant add-ons, just a good, clean vehicle at a very fair price. That's why Cade Motor Company has been in business for 40 years, minutes from the Quaker Bridge Mall off Route 1 in Lawrenceville. Or visit CadeMotorCompany.com. That's CadeMotorCompany.com. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation. And that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. My name is Dr. Victor Alfieri. I'm the owner here at All Cure Spine and Sports Medicine, where we have three convenient locations in New Jersey, in Hamilton, Somerset, and Monroe. Here we offer three different services and take a multidisciplinary approach. We offer physical therapy, chiropractic, and acupuncture services. We have three different doctors working under one roof, collaborating together in order to customize a treatment plan catered to what your goals are are in order to help you improve your pain and function. Instead of driving around to three different places or paying three different copays, you come to one place where the three doctors will be working together to help you manage your pain and improve your function. Please don't hesitate to visit our website at www.allcurespineandsports.com where you'll see where you can make an appointment or find more information related to what your goals are. Thank you. Mr. Weber. At this time, we would like to pay tribute to all the lives that have been touched by breast cancer. Each year, it is estimated that nearly 297,000 women and 2,800 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Obviously, no one wants to receive this diagnosis, but hearing the words breast cancer does not mean an end. The good news is that death rates for breast cancer have been declining since 1990, in part due to better screening and detection. Events like this can be the beginning of understanding the facts, learning how to fight, and finding hope. And now, Ms. Wargo will present our heroes and angels. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Notre Dame honors the families and friends walking in memory of beautiful angels who are watching over us from heaven. We would like to begin with Notre Dame's own angel, 
Carolyn Ashton Graham, who is represented by her family. Her family is Bill, Ryan, Charlotte, Amy, Jameson, Butch, George, Michaela, and Cassidy. Next up, Angel Louise Bercy had been fighting cancer for five years and passed away just this September. Walking out in her loving honor are Marissa, Leah, Ramon, and the whole Bercy family. Christine Reba and her family, Andy, Matthew, and Timmy, are walking in the name of their mother and grandmother, Angel Sandy Lubis. Julia Crenshaw is being remembered by her daughter, Kimberly Crenshaw Jenkins, and granddaughters, Julia and Jalen. The Primerano family are walking for their angel, Francis Brining. And now our warriors who are bravely fighting this disease and our heroic survivors with their faithful family and friends. Cynthia Elizio is a one year survivor she is escorted by her husband, Sam, and son, Sebastian. Cynthia wants you all to know that early detection saved her life. Maureen Miller is also a one-year survivor, escorted by her niece, Kelsey Blackshire, and a cute little one. <laughs> Next up is Sharon Coluccio. She's a two-year survivor, escorted by her husband, Ernie, and granddaughters, Audrey and Ava. Joanne Ryan is a four-year survivor and escorted by her husband, Richard, ND class of 72, and family friend, Jimmy Falcone. At this time, we would also like to recognize the devastating loss of Notre Dame's angel, Anna Corella. Anna was a teacher in the foreign language department and a swim team liaison for 15 years. Mary Smith is a four-year survivor. She's being escorted by her husband, Jim, daughter, Colleen, and sister, Ellen Falkenstein. Joanne Braschelli is a four and a half year survivor, escorted by her grandchildren, Sienna and Dylan. Retired teacher and coach, Mrs. Elsie Moore, is a six-year survivor. She's being escorted by her grandsons, Wyatt and Shane Moore. Craig Harris and April Thistle are walking out in honor of their angel, June Harris. June is also sister to Mrs. Elsie Moore. Marilyn Driscoll is a seven-year survivor, escorted by her daughter, Michaela, and family friends, Tara, Gianna, Mia Dabari, Kaylin Delahanti, and Sarah Farnan. Jen Miracoli is a nine-year survivor, 
she's being escorted by her family, Charlie, Riley, and Alex. Muriel Cherry is a 10-year survivor, but is beginning her fight once again. She's being walked by graduate David Nicholas. Nicole Hellyer is a 10-year survivor. She's being escorted by her family, Mike, Alyssa, and Ethan. Janelle Ilfeld is an 11-year survivor. She's being escorted by her daughter, Adeline. They are also walking out to honor their angel, Sheila Ilfeld. Barbara Avenoso is an 11-year survivor. She's being escorted by her nephew, Eddie Kuzinski. Next up is Muriel Williams, a 12-year survivor, and Colleen Williams, a 13-year survivor. They both are being escorted by their loving family, Kathleen, Brooke, and Julia. Maureen Conway is a 13-year survivor. She's being escorted by her children, Joseph and Marie. Class of 1964 graduate, Barbara Artery, is a 15-year survivor. And Barbara's daughter, Kelly Artery Nitty, class of 91, is in her first year. Both are being escorted by their granddaughter and niece, Bryn Fitzpatrick. The Upset family is walking in honor of their angel, Clara Marino, and heroes, Sandy and Clara Baldwin. <laughs> Grandmother Katerina Tramo is a 17-year survivor, escorted by all her family members that love her every day. Nicolina and Anita, Sofia, Santo, Mio, Rafael, Gemma, Tramo. <laughs> Mrs. Olivo is a two time, 18 year survivor escorted by her daughter Gina her son-in-law, Scott, and her grandchildren, Haley and Katie. <laughs> Grandmother Seal Gallucci is a 23-year survivor, and her daughter, Adrian Martin, is in her first month of treatment. They're being escorted by granddaughter and niece, Kate Spadea. And now a 24-year survivor, Elizabeth Bibber Lanzoni, class of 1979. She's being escorted by her nephews, Matthew and Andrew Weaverling. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to bring a 25-year survivor, Susan Marchese. She's a two-year survivor, and she's being escorted by her granddaughter, Emma. As we support our fighters, admire the survivors, and honor the taken, let's give a big round of applause, because we will never, ever give up hoping that this disease will end. Look at this beautiful circle. Haircut.
And now on to the haircut. Our final saints tonight are making a huge sacrifice so that women with breast cancer will know that they are embraced with the love and spirit of the Notre Dame community. These donations of hair will go to the Locks of Love. Thank you once again to Ginny Patina and Alyssa Pandolfi from Salon Orchigiano in Robbinsville and our volunteers for helping us make this cut tonight. So these brave individuals range from the age of 10 to close to 40. Uh, we have the class of 2031. All right. We have our seniors. Raise your hands and give them a wave, seniors. We have a graduate class of 18 and class of 06. Are you ready to watch these beautiful women make a cut to make a difference for others? All right, ladies, turn around. And Alyssa Pandolfi from Salon Artigiano is going to make the cut. another two. This hair is going to be donated to Locks of Love that give free wigs to children who are undergoing cancer treatments or cannot grow hair themselves. Next year I'd like to have 20 people out there so keep growing out your hair. Jack Weber is a senior, and he donated his hair. He donated 10 inches, and also Brianna Graham. We can bring our heroes and angels in. Ladies and gentlemen, you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Together, as one community, we will continue to pink out cancer. Thank you, Notre Dame, God bless, and early detection is the key. Have a good night. Thank you to all of our heroes, all those walking for our angels and our survivors. God bless you all. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. 
to find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit CapitalMedicalGroup.org. That's CapitalMedicalGroup.org. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that hold. Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609 609- 882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery. And over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorn, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? This is Angela Weiner for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County student-athletes the best of luck, and also urge parents to stay involved in your children's school activities. Extracurricular events are a great way to keep your sons and daughters focused. And it does not have to be athletics. They can be involved with the drama club, the school band, even the debate team. An involved student today has a brighter future tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, and I hope you enjoy today's game. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV, then visit Cade Motor Company at their new bigger location of Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville. Kate Motor Company is locally owned, and they've been there for over 40 years, and they offer over 50 hand-picked certified used cars, trucks, and SUVs. They have all makes and models, all personally inspected by the owners. You can provide your own financing, or Cade Motor Company can assist you to make your car buying experience seamless. No exorbitant add-ons, just a good, clean vehicle at a very fair price. That's why Cade Motor Company has been in business for 40 years, minutes from the Quaker Bridge Mall off Route 1 in Lawrenceville, or visit CadeMotorCompany.com. That's CadeMotorCompany.com. Back at Notre Dame High School, final minutes tick off of the halftime clock as we are just a handful of seconds away from second half action between the Irish of Notre Dame and the Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley. A pleasant good evening yet again, everybody. Mike Warren alongside Joe O'Gorman. Joe, a pretty intriguing first half, an entertaining first half to say the least. We had a goal line fumble. We had a number of big hitters down the middle of the field, both passing wise and running wise for both of these teams. And at the half, the score looking a lot like 21 to 14 in favor of Hopewell Valley and the reigning Capital Division champions one half away from reobtaining that division championship title. The Irish, on the other hand, trying to prevent that from happening, of course, but also their undefeated season at stake. 8-0 entering tonight's contest. They've won four of the last five against the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs, and it's going to take a very strong effort, more so, I feel, from the defense, as they haven't really been able to 
find the recipe for stopping Hopewell Valley on third and long and fourth and long. A couple of big conversions for the Bulldogs in that first half. In my opinion, a large reason why they find themselves in front between the successful ground attack from running back Ben Decor and the methodical passing game from their quarterback in Milan Desai. It's been very impressive to see how Coach Caldwell and the Bulldogs have elected to attack this Irish defense, and they've done it pretty well to this point. Yeah, Mike, they came out on fire, and they got up early, and they took advantage of a fumble, uh, and they were up 14 nothing before Notre Dame had a drive that came back and got a score themselves. You had Ben DeCore, gave, he has 130 yards at halftime, and most of them came in the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, you had uh, Milan Desai start to throw the ball, and he hooked up for a touchdown pass. Then on the other end, Notre Dame, Notre Dame answering there at the end of the first half, last two minutes or so of the first half, was a big play for Notre Dame. It's a lot easier going down 21-14 in the locker room than 21-7. And they're going to get the ball back now. So, And you got Winowitz that has 72 yards. And Serace is 11, uh, nine, 7 for 11 for 86 yards. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens on this first possession for Notre Dame. An important tidbit of information we received just a couple moments ago. Injury news for the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. They will be without Owen Langle, their junior wideout, defensive back, and kicker for the majority or for the remainder of this game. That is what we were told up here in the booth. It looks like John Michael Vlasic to boot things away. Luke Caldwell out there with him as well. Back to receive for Notre Dame, Andy Zigbo, the lone man. Classic, a high flying kick. Zigbo fields it right around the 15 yard line. Cuts it back around the 20, near the 25, finally brought down around the 23. They'll give him forward progress at the 25 yard line. First and 10 for the Irish. Zigbo a little slow to get up and makes his way slowly over to the Irish sideline. So A.J. Serace and the Notre Dame offense back out on the field to start half number two. Split receiver set to start for the Irish. Stefanisco and Quinn at the bottom. Magliazzo and Pelzer at the top. Irish now get everybody set at the line. In the pistol, Winowich behind Serace. Play action, they'll go right side, or left, excuse me, it's Pelzer. Fighting forward, strong gain of 14 on the quick hitter on the RPO from Serace to Max Pelzer. That's a first down and 10 for the Irish. Real quick hitter right there, and they got some good yardage out of it. Ball spotted at their own 39-yard line. Irish going no huddle. Same formation. Just as I say that, shotgun split formation, Winowich to the right of Serace. RPO in law this time for Quinn. Can't handle the pass, incomplete. Pass incomplete intended for number three, Michael Quinn. The Hopewell defender was right there as soon as that ball got into Quinn's hands. That defender was Alan Patterson. Another pass breakup for Patterson. That's been a matchup to watch in this one. Michael Quinn against Alan Patterson. Quinn beat Patterson earlier for a touchdown. Second and long, read option. Serace draws it out, trying to fight off Hopewell defenders, and he's going to be brought down right back at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a yard behind, and that's going to bring up third and 11 for the Maybe Irish offense. One, AJ Serace, it's third down. Serace mm -hmm. takes a long look over to the sideline. Trips to the top of the screen. Magliazzo, the lone receiver at the bottom. Winowich to the left to Serace. Takes the snap, looking left side. Drops back. Off the back foot. Floats it up down the middle. It is incomplete. A lot of contact down the middle of the field. And it looked like That's Quinn had his hand held the entire way, and the flags remain on the holsters. What'd you see, Joe? I, I thought the defender was got inside him, and it looked like the pass went a little bit too much toward the defender. So I thought it was a good play. Quinn was looking for the flags, but could not find any. And here comes the punt team as the Bulldogs defense forces the Irish offense off the field for the second time tonight. Magliazzo on to punt. 
A lot of movement up front for the Bulldogs. Good snap. Magliazzo just gets the punt away. It's a boomer. Out of bounds right around the Notre Dame, or right around the Hopewell Valley 30-yard line. They'll spot this one at the 32 in Hopewell Valley territory. I'm sure Notre Dame, Notre Dame didn't want a three and out on their first series in the second half. First down and 10 to go for the Bulldogs at their own 32-yard line. That's where Milan Desai and the Bulldogs offense will set up shop for the, their first possession of half number two. Ball spotted at the hash closest to us here in the booth and nearest the Notre Dame sideline. Iris showing blitz. Woods comes up, stacked in the box. Desai looks over to the sideline. Loaded backfield. Pitch, right side, Decor fighting forward. He's stuck by Cam Bailey, but not before he picks up about Pick five on the carry. Number five, ben Decor brought down by number Maybe seven. they're going to go back to what got them their lead in the first quarter. A seven-point advantage on the scoreboard. Wouldn't be surprised to see them try and impose their will of phys physically on this Notre Dame defense like they did in the first half, as you mentioned, Joe. Second and five. Ellerby at the bottom of the screen. They'll go back to Decor. Right side, fighting forward. Give him four more, almost five. He's short of the first down marker by about a half a yard. Third and inches for the Bulldogs. Big play here for the Notre Dame defense, third and one. Hopewell's been very successful on third down. Third and short. Looks like the Irish going man coverage here. They'll go back to Decor. Left side's got the first down and a couple more. Enough to move the sticks as Ben Decor fights forward for four more. Carry by number five, ben DeCour, Three straight by carries number for Ben Decor, 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 Decor of at least four Decor yards Decor results in a first down. down. Tough play to beat was a that. little slow developing, Mike. I thought Notre Dame was possibly get in there on it. Decor all night long is really displayed great patience, taking his time, allowing the alleyways to open up for him. Desai in the gun with a back to his right, it's Decor. Caldwell at the bottom of the screen, they'll go to Decor, right side with a seam, stuck by Razika, but five more yards on the ground for Decor. Similar to the first half. Yeah, just the way the game started. This front seven for the Irish has no answers for Hopewell Valley. The ground game, unstoppable in this one. Second and five. Ball spotted right at the 50-yard line. Desai in the gun, takes the snap. You guessed it. Back to Decor, right side. A little less room this time. Still finds three as he spins out of a couple of tackles. Third down and a short two yards to go for the Bulldogs. They had him stopped and he spun for two more yards. Sometimes when things are going your way, they stay your way, and that's the case in this one for Ben Decor. He's been a monster out of the backfield for Hopewell Valley. Third down and two to go. Decor to the right of Desai. Ellerby at the bottom of the screen. Caldwell at the top. Back to Decor. Right side, bouncing it out. First down and more. Still on his feet across the 35-30. 25-20, 15-10. Tackled inside the 10-yard line. Ben Decor, first down and goal to go for the Bulldogs. That's amazing, Mike. I mean, went around the right side there. I thought they had him. It looked like he had the first down. Next thing I know, he bursts out, and he's down near the end zone. It doesn't matter the distance. On third down tonight, the Bulldogs have taken it to this Irish defense. First and goal from the Notre Dame eight. Two receivers at the bottom of the screen. It's Ellerby and Caldwell, and a flag is thrown. Flag on the play. And again, no official giving a signal on to what Here it, comes. it is. Here it comes. Penalty on Hopewell Valley. It'll push them back five yards. It's still first down. I didn't see it, did you? Here it comes, right there. The legal procedure, I think. So you go back to the 13. 
Anybody, uh, there you go. First down and goal to go from the 14 yard line. Desai takes the snap, play action, fires complete. Ellerby, he is in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Hopo Valley. Milan Desai to Theo Ellerby from 14 yards out. And the lead is re-extended for Hopewell Valley. An extra point away from making this a 14 point game yet again. Coach Caldwell and the Bulldogs. They've got the magic recipe to this point. Yeah. Irish with no answers. When they need a big play, they get it, Mike. All night. Vlasic on for the extra point. He's perfect so far. Good snap. Good hold. Kick is up. And it is good. 7.40 remaining in quarter number three, and the Bulldogs back on top by 14. 28 to 14 the score, and the undefeated Irish with their backs against the wall. Still a ton of time left in this game, Joe O'Gorman, but yes. Hopewell Valley with all of the momentum, it feels like. Yeah, well, Notre Dame came out and had a, you know, no drive, couldn't get anything started. Hopewell Valley takes it and drives right down the field. Gets a big run from Ben DeCour, and then uh, Desai hits Velasic right coming across the middle with a touchdown. Notre Dame's got to come out and show some emotion and a little bit of sense of urgency here. I'm watching the Notre Dame sideline. There's a lot of frustration coming from some of the guys in the front seven. Talking with some of the defensive coaches down there on the sideline, just confused and frustrated and upset down there. It's multiple guys on that front seven just with their hands to the sky, just visibly frustrated down there. And you have to wonder what answers can the Irish defense come up with to stop Ben DeCour? And then on top of that, how do you stop Milan Desai? He's been excellent. Well, maybe this might be at the point right now where Notre Dame just has, has to outscore him. Vlasic on to kick things away. A low squib kick, takes a bounce, fielded by Zigbo. Across the 25, now the 30, 35, 40. Zigbo with space, looking for the sideline, cuts it in at the 50, and he's tripped up right at the 50-yard line. Across the 50, down to the 48. Great field position for the Irish to start this drive. That's a great way to start. Patient running from Andy Zigbo. Got a couple of blocks in there as well as he was tripped up at the Hopewell Valley 48. Late substitutions for both of these teams, Irish, Going quick even before a snap here. Trips to the top. Kilcommon's the tight end at the bottom of the screen. Snap taken. Fired over the middle. Incomplete. Ball was behind Stefanisco. Passing Pass incomplete. Second and 10. Stefanisco. Clock stops. 7.28 to go in the third quarter. I That's a name we... Steady diet of winter wish here might be a, a good thing for the Irish. Getting the ground game going definitely could be... An ally of the Irish offense. Winowich to the left. They motion him that side. Serace, design run, cuts it up the middle, has a seam, still on his feet. Splits a man at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Irish! A.J. Serace from 48 yards away for the score. This kid can do it all, Joe. Yeah, he broke right through there. Snapped a couple tackles and just broke it outside to the left side of the field. He was clear sailing after that. Serace uses his legs and finds Paydirt. Scarborough on for the extra point. Looking to make this a seven-point game. Magliazzo gets the snap. Low snap handled. Kick is up, and it splits the uprights. It's good. 7-18 remaining in quarter number three, and just like that, a seven-point deficit back on the scoreboard as the Irish cut it in half. On the ground with the legs from A.J. Serace. What a run. 48 yards for six. If offense is what you want to see, you got it tonight. That's for sure from both teams. The game of the year on WBCB and the game of the year in Mercer County. It doesn't get much better than this. 
It's time to view the world through Jammer Doors and Windows, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees in 1920, and today Jammer continues to swat home run sales service and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, storm doors, and windows. Jammer Doors features Rainer garage doors, steel or aluminum, and crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors and Windows do their own work and installation using no subcontractors, saving you money. Avoid the big box stores and save with Jammer Doors and Windows. Visit their showroom at 2850 Brunswick Pike, Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville. The Yardley Showroom open by appointment at 215-493-7709. Swiatek to boot things away. Ellerby and company back to receive for Hopewell Valley. Booming kick. Deep left side. Ellerby bobbles it at the one. Picks it up. Irish. Pounce on him quickly as he's tackled inside the 10. Just past the 10 yard line at the 11 is where they'll spot it. Almost a crisis for the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. Avoided by Ellerby on that recovery as he fielded it in his end zone. He dropped it right on the one and the Irish kickoff team able to reap the benefits. He should have just let that ball go for a touchback. Definitely had the distance for a touchback. Out back on the field. Milan Desai. On the 10. And Ben Decour. First and 10. 7-12 remaining in quarter number three. Ball spotted at their own 11-yard line. Flasic, the man in motion. Sweep right side. Decour with space. And that's a gain of nine for Ben Decour. Ball's loose down there on the turf. Irish think they have it. The officials are going to say he's marked down. Clancy, Coach Clancy, that is, out on the field for the Irish, pointing in their direction, saying they got it. Liam Kilcommons talking with a side judge as well, pleading his case. Nonetheless, the ruling on the field, a gain of nine and second and one after another strong carry from Ben Decor. It remains Hopewell Ball. Notre Dame needs to get one of them jammer doors and shut, shut it right on the uh, Hopewell offense here. <laughs> It's a good plug there, Joe. Second and short, back to Decor. Sweep, right side, with space, has the sideline and tripped up by Musa Kamara and company. Looked like Connor Razika as well in on the stop. By number five, Ben Decor, brought down by number 52. Decor Connor looks like Razzica, he's always one tackle Decor away from breaking it down here. First down. And for the Irish, Hopewell Valley, they're not doing anything that they haven't done all night long. Sweeps to either direction. Yep. No contain on the edge to this point for Notre Dame. You can't keep going third and one and third and two and think you're going to stop them. Well, the, the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs have done a tremendous job of getting their linemen, pulling them to either side, and getting them lined up on a defensive back, a matchup that every lineman should win just about ten times out of ten. As we had a stoppage of the clock, and now it resumes. and Desai... Motions Vlasic to the right. Takes the snap. You guessed it. Decor, sweep, right side. Same play. Three times in a row. Six yards at least on that same play. Good for a gain of about six yards. Brought down by a company. Second and four. It almost feels like I'm, I'm watching my younger brother playing Madden. <laughs> He's just calling the same play and flipping it to either side of the field. It's, that's really all Caldwell and the Bulldogs are doing to this point. They keep finding themselves in third and two, third and four. And there they go. Same play. Right side. Same result. Six yards and more for Ben DeCour. Game of about six yards for Ben DeCour. They can't stop this guy tonight, and the Notre Dame Irish are going to have to take a timeout. 5.35, they burn their first timeout of the second half. Timeout used by the Irish. That's their first of the half. They have two remaining. Those early timeouts got the Irish in a little bit of trouble in the first half. First down and 10 for Hopewell Valley. As Coach Bailey, the defensive coordinator for the Irish, out on the field with his defense, and again, just reading the body language. A lot of frustrated faces and a lot of frustrated body language as a whole for the Irish defense is 
Got to figure out how to stop that sweep around the right end. And just a moment ago, former head coach of the Irish, the legend Chavi Moore, just walked right behind us here in the yes. press box and stuck his nose into the coaching box up here for the Irish. Maybe he sees something that they're not seeing down there on the field or, or even up here, but the Irish defensively tonight have been unable to contain the edge, and Ben Decor has been reaping all the benefits. 5.35 remaining in quarter number three. Bulldogs with a seven-point advantage. 28-21 the score. Just about set for action to resume. Desai takes a step towards the line, barks out the orders. Motions Vlasic. Looks like a sweep to the right yet again. They'll counter it. Back to the left. Yasher up the middle, fighting forward. It's 12, 13, 14 yards on the ground. Dylan Yasher. Doesn't matter if it's Yasher or uh, Decor. <laughs> right, was just showing up the say. yards. Yasher doing his best Ben Decor impersonation and just thrashing the Irish defense up the middle for 14. Moves the sticks. Bulldogs in Irish territory. At their 45. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. Decor to the left of Desai. Motion man Vlasic. Looks like they'll keep it on the ground again. Shocker. They go back to Decor. Up the middle he goes. Splitting defenders. And somehow finds five. Popped out of that pile there. Next thing you know he's the only Laying there five yards after he took the handoff. Ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Second down, five yards to go for the Bulldogs. Grounding and pounding their way down the field. 4.35 and counting here in quarter number three. Looking to re-extend this to a 14-point advantage are the Bulldogs. Caldwell and Ellerby, the receivers at the bottom of the screen. Vlasic in the backfield. He motions to the right yet again. Play action this time. Desai on the run across his body. Complete. Caldwell hauls it in just short of the 25-yard line, down at the 24. They're lucky that Caldwell fell down. He was all alone. Correction, down to the 26, my apologies. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. The play action that time, keeping the Irish defense off balance. And this is a defense now for the Irish. They look like they're just a bit tired here. Late substitution. Renda comes back out onto the field. Vlasic motions to the left this time. They'll go to the left with Decor on the ground. Has a seam across the 20, across the 15, down shy of the 10. Around the 11-yard line at the 12 is where they'll spot it. It's another first down and another gain of 10-plus yards for Ben Decor. 14-yard gain. Stay by that thing. Yeah, but the, the, light off, the light was off on the battery. No lights Delayed handoff, Decor right side, looking for the sideline. Kill Commons on the pursuit, misses him, and Decor finds the end zone. Ben Decor, good for a Hopo Valley touchdown. Left side, right side, it don't matter. No answers for Ben Decor. Unstoppable. That time, he just ran around everyone. Vlasic comes on for the extra point. As the frustrations start to mount for the Notre Dame defensive coaching staff and sideline, Extra point is blocked by Renda. Ball's loose and fallen on. Renda comes in and blocks the extra point. Maybe a little bit of momentum here for the Irish as a big extra point block. Keeps this a 13-point game. Three minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. The Irish offense waiting for possession back. Almost a four-minute drive there for Hopewell. One of the things I noticed on a couple of the carries by Decor is a couple, 
couple of Notre Dame players are reaching in, trying to just get the ball out instead of just making the tackle. How do the Irish defensively get contained on the edge? How do they do it? Because Kilcommons has struggled tonight, and he's typically up to the task and more than capable, but with these linemen pulling each direction, you've seen double teams on the best tacklers and best rushers yeah, I, for I the Irish. I think you've got to give Hopewell Valley's offensive line a lot of credit. Yes, you do. But they're you know they're making the blocks that they need to make to free up these backs, and you know Notre Dame just can't seem to get through the block. And I wonder too, how long until you potentially start to tease with the idea of having a spy on Bendicour, just literally dedicating one defender. You're covering number five from here on out. We'll see. Maybe Connor Razica gets tasked with that job for the remainder of this one, but so far, there has not been a single member of the Irish who's had an answer for decor. Line drive kick, hauled in by Jones around the 30, cuts it in at the 35, looking for the sideline, tackled around the 37, close to the 38, and that's where the Irish will get possession. You know, big key might be that missed extra point too, Mike. A big time block from Will Renda. And a chance now for the Irish here. If they can go down and score, you might maybe a toy with going for two. But then again, that, that extra point on the yeah, touchdown. Really just need the one all the time. I mean, it's proven Notre Dame can score, so it still isn't over. Bunch set at the top. Saray's looking screen. Left side complete. Winowich trying to fight forward, and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Screen pass complete to number six, Gabe Winowich. No Ball room for right Gabe Winowich. Tackle for no gain. Second and ten. Three minutes and counting. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. From their own 39-yard line, Quinn Pelzer, Stefanisco trips to the bottom. Kill Commons, the tight end at the top with Winowich to the right of Cerise. Sweep, left side, Winowich cuts it back towards the middle, and he's tackled after a gain of about four. It's going to bring up third down and a long seven yards to go. Big down here for the Irish offense. It is very big. Trailing by 13. 225 and counting, Sarace takes the snap. They'll give it to Winowich. Fighting through, Winowich still on his feet, has the first down and more as he's pushed out of bounds across the 45-yard line. Give him about 14 on the carry, first down and 10 for the Irish. Ball spotted at the 44 in Hopewell Valley territory. Scipio comes in for Winowich, he'll get a breather. Kill Commons, the tight end at the top. Scipio to the right of Serace. Play action. Serace steps up, evades a man, still looking, has no one, dicing around and tripped up in the backfield for a sack. John Michael Vlasic got an arm on the foot of Serace enough to trip him up. Second down and 12 to go. A broken play that just had nobody open for the Irish. Yes, the race kept looking for somebody, couldn't find anybody. Tried to come back the other way, and that's where the Hopewell defense was. Second and a long 12 to go for the Irish. Magliazzo coming on, Kilcommons coming off. Pelzer moves to the top of the screen. Final minute 30 here in the third quarter. Second and long, Serace takes the snap, wants the throw, looks left, fires, caught. Magliazzo complete, give him about eight on the reception, maybe nine. It's gonna bring up third down and short for the Irish. A dart from Serace to Magliazzo, hauled in for a gain of about eight, maybe nine. Third and a long three to go. Pelzer to the bottom, trips with Stefanisco and Quinn. Serace gives to Winowich. Left side, moving, lunging forward across the yard to gain. It's a first down around the 30-yard line. It'll move the sticks. The Irish continue to drive. Minute 10 and counting here in quarter number three. Irish still trailing, 34-21. Serace with Winowich to his right. Split receiver set. 
Pelzer in the slot at the top of the screen. Winowich on the play action complete. Stefanisco cuts back, lunges forward towards the 20. He's tackled at the 21. That's where they'll mark him right around the first down marker. We'll see if it's enough to move the sticks. No word yet from the officials. Irish trying to keep that no huddle tempo going. Don't it's enough to move the sticks. It's going to be first down and 10. The official just moved them forward. Chain gang a bit delayed. They're trying to get set up. Finally, they get moving. Serace ready to go. Chains weren't set. Serace gets the snap off. Winowich tackled down after a gain of about two as he gets spun down. Making the tackle was number 10, Luke Hemmer, the sophomore linebacker for Hopewell Valley. Second down and a long nine. Gain of about one and a half. Pelzer in motion. He comes into the backfield for a sec. Now back in to the slot at the bottom of the screen. Serace looking left. Wants to throw, does. Over the middle. Hounded was Quinn, and here comes the flag. Yeah. Pass Passing interference against the Bulldogs. Flag on the play. And we'll see if this will be a spot foul or because it was not of a pass greater than 15 yards. They might mark this at the spot of the foul. Pass interference against Patterson. Patterson's injured too out there, but he's not coming off. And it looks like Patterson down on the turf. The officials just realizing it. The medical staff coming onto the field for Hopewell Valley. Patterson down. The injured Bulldog will take a quick timeout. 10 seconds left in the third quarter. The Irish into the red zone. First down and goal to go from the Hopewell Valley 10. On the other side of this timeout, the Irish trail 34 to 21. 10 seconds remaining in quarter number three. You're watching the game of the year in Mercer County on the WBCB Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. My name is Dr. Victor Alfieri. I'm the owner here at All Cure Spine and Sports Medicine, where we have three convenient locations in New Jersey, in Hamilton, Somerset, and Monroe. Here we offer three different services and take a multidisciplinary approach. We offer physical therapy, chiropractic, and acupuncture services. We have three different doctors working under one roof, collaborating together in order to customize a treatment plan catered to what your goals are in order to help you improve your pain and function. Instead of driving around to three different places or paying three different copays, you come to one place where the three doctors will be working together to help you manage your pain and improve your function. Please don't hesitate to visit our website at www.allcurespineandsports.com where you'll see where you can make an appointment or find more information related to what your goals are. Thank you. First and goal for the Irish. First From the Hopewell goal. Valley 10-yard line. Winowich in the backfield with Serace. He's to his left. Split receiver set. Correction, two to the top, one to the bottom. It's Pelzer at the bottom. Delayed handoff pitch. Over the middle. Caught. Kill Commons. Touchdown, Irish. Play action. They faked it to Winowich. They found Kill Commons, the tight end, over the middle. It's his first touchdown of the season, and it comes at a much needed time. Seven seconds left in the third quarter, and the Irish an extra point away from making this a six point game. It was wide open, Mike, when he got through the, the front line. Kill Big Commons extra point here. with the haul for the six. Scarborough on, movement up front, looked like offside from the Bulldogs. No flags, kick is up, and it is good. Seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Irish trailing by six. 34 to six, the score. With seven seconds left in the third quarter. With only seven ticks remaining in quarter number three, the Irish with a little bit of life injected into their sideline after that drive. Going to be an interesting fourth quarter. One thing we noticed, Joe O'Gorman, was we mentioned it earlier, former head coach of the Irish, 298 career wins for the highly esteemed Chappy Moore. He made his way from the luxury suite over to the defensive coaching box. He has not left that room since. 
We will see if there are any adjustments or any words of encouragement or advice that potentially the retired Coach Moore is going to provide for this Notre Dame team and coaching staff as they are in dire need of a stop trailing by six with a quarter and change remaining in this one. When you have the, the history Chappie has, their, their words of wisdom. <laughs> Swiatek on to boot things away. A booming kick, deep, and that's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. touchback. Powerful so leg does Sebastian Swiatek have, and a great kick into the end zone that time. The Bulldogs not testing fate, just going to let that one bounce into the Carolina blue end zone and out of the back. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 20-yard line. Should be a quick quarter here, seven seconds left. Seven seconds remaining here in quarter number three. The Irish offensively coming off of a touchdown drive to make this a six-point game. The blocked extra point from Will Renda, momentous to this point. The man in motion is John Michael Vlasic, decor to the left. They'll sweep it with him. Right side, looking for the sideline. They set the edge, but he still finds three. A much better effort from the Irish defense as the contain was there, but Decor able to fall forward for three, maybe even four. Give him second and six, and that's the end of the third quarter. We'll flip the field as we have one quarter remaining. The WJFL Capital Division title on the line. 12 minutes remain. Who will come out on top? A rematch from the year from a year ago between the undefeated Irish of Notre Dame and the six and one Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley. The reigning champs 12 minutes away from repeating the Irish six points down in hopes of coming back and capturing the Capital Division title. Fourth quarter action next on the WBCB Sports Network. Only on Second oh, down. Pieces. Five to go for the Bulldogs. If you got a seat belt, buckle it up. It's going to be a hell of a quarter. Yasher on the ground, up the middle, fighting forward. Give him four. Third and one. And Third down and inches to go for the Bulldogs. Yasha remains in the game. He's in the backfield to the left of Desai. Vlasic the tight end, he's in the backfield as well. They'll go, Yasher, left side up the middle, he's got the first down. Well up to this point, Mike, this game has lived up to the hype. Carry by Ben DeCour, good. It has been everything that was expected. The Bulldogs sticking with the ground game trying to kill as much clock as they can and cap a drive with another score. The Irish defense looking for a stop and their biggest stop of the night at that. It's first and 10, ball spotted on their own 32. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Desai floats it up. Caught by Vlasic on the bobble, has the sideline, across the 50, hurdles a man, still in bounds, but they called him out right around the 45-yard line. John Michael Vlasic channeling his inner Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Picking right back up where he left off in this game a year ago. Hasn't found the end zone, but he has found a number of big receptions that have moved the sticks for this offense here tonight. First and 10, now in Irish territory from their own 47. Yeah, I think everybody thought the ball was going to Decor here and Vlasic just floated out there into the flat. 
from the Irish 47, I should say, Desai. With Decor to his right. Two receivers at the bottom. Back to Decor, up the middle. Razika there on the stop. Only two for Decor on the ground. Razika with a big time tackle, second and eight. Clock continues to tick. 10 30 and counting. You get to this point of the game, both the leadership on these teams is going to have to come through. You know, you're going to see Vlasic on the Hopewell side, Razika on the Notre Dame side. This guy's got to step up now. Second and eight. Desai breaks the huddle. Vlasic to the left. Decor in the gun. Motioning to the right is Vlasic. They'll sweep. Right side with Decor. Turns it upfield. He's got six. Gain of six for number five, Ben Decor. It's third down. Give him about five actually on that carry. Third down. Three yards to go. Irish fans trying to make some noise. It feels like the Bulldogs have been perfect all night long. I believe they've only been unsuccessful one time on third down tonight. That this was the only time they ended up punting. Third and three. Irish showing blitz. Vlasic in motion. Decor, left side, first down and more. Still on his feet, dragging defenders down inside the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Hopewell Valley. Ben Decor has had a career tonight. He didn't have a night. He had a career. A game for the ages for Ben Decor, the game of his life. First and 10. At the Notre Dame 25, Hopewell Valley more than content taking precious seconds off the clock. Under nine minutes and counting, Desai breaks the huddle. John Ellis now in the backfield with Decor to the right of Desai. Man in motion. That's Caldwell. He's in the slot. Back to Decor. Room up the middle. Brought down by Renda, but not before he picks up six. Game of about six for number five, Ben Decor, brought down by number 42, Will Renda. It's second and four for the Bulldogs. Ben Decor is going to be picking tire treads out of his, from the turf. Well, we'll see, more than likely, we will see Ben Decor at the next Mercer County 12th Man Touchdown Club gathering because he has just put the Hopewell Valley offense on his back tonight. He certainly has. And if they're able to hold on in this one, he will be the player of the game without a doubt. Ellerby to the top of the screen. Caldwell at the bottom with Vlasic the tight end. Ellis in the backfield. Decor to the right. Ellis in motion to the left. Back to Decor they go. Right side. Splits a man up the middle. Lunging forward down at the 10. First down and goal to go for the Bulldogs. What a workhorse this kid is. Wow. It's tough for us to tell if there's been any changes made defensively for Notre Dame, but down on that sideline, a lot of coaches standing together and, and talking to one another, they, they just look like they have no answers whatsoever. It seems like they're trying different things, but they're just not working. You've got to give Dave Caldwell coming in with a great game plan. Oh, tremendous. Caldwell looking for his second consecutive victory and his second consecutive Capital Division title. Decor to the left of Desai, taking his time, takes the snap, a low one, bobbled, handled, given off to Decor. Bailey sets the edge. No, that's Kamara, and he makes the stop. Musa Kamara with a big time tackle for a loss back at the 14 yard line. Second and goal from the 14 in the Notre Dame territory are the Bulldogs of Hopewell Valley. That play was doomed from the beginning. The snap was bad. And the side had to go down and get it. That's the first miscue or really yep. You're right. sign of shooting themselves in the foot offensively for Hopewell Valley, even when they've had false starts. Offsides or false starts set them back. They've been able to convert on third and long and fourth and long. This is second goal, 14 yards to go. 
Vlasic in motion, decor to the right in the backfield. They'll give it to him. Left side, up the middle, cutting it back, fighting forward. Give him eight. Carried to number five, Ben it's Down to the six. For about eight yards. Ball spotted at the Notre Dame yes. six yard line. It's Third fun. down and goal to go after the strong yeah. effort on the ground from Ben Decor. You think maybe they go back to him here? Yeah, I think so. And also, this is fourth down territory. Absolutely, it is. Under six minutes remaining. The Bulldogs taking their time. A score might ice this one. You know, a draw by Desai is another thing that they haven't, we haven't seen that in a little while. Vlasic in the backfield. Decor to the left. Vlasic in motion. Screen looking left side over the middle. It's incomplete. And a flag comes in. Oh, my. What? The latest flag you will ever see just came in to bail the Bulldogs out. That is an unpopular call here tonight. And that is not a good one, folks. That's a you had the same play earlier in this game, and the flags were silent. To make that call at this juncture is beyond questionable. It's a holding call. Defensive holding on Andy Zigbo inside five yards of the goal line, not a call you see every day according to the rules. It brings the first down with it too, doesn't it? Excuse me, correction, it's still third down. Oh, wow. Defensive holding the call. Defensive holding on the Irish. And the sticks resembling the still a third down. third down. Yeah. Time out. Due to you the hold the call. You know the roof on the but the second, the second even if it is a defensive eight. hold, wouldn't it? If you accept the penalty. No, I think it's a first down, but I, they're still saying it's third down. Yeah, but why not first down on the hold? Well, we're trying to get things ironed out up here in the booth, trying to figure out the officiating decisions down there on the field. It'll be third down, half the distance to the two. The amount of head scratchers here tonight. I'll have to ask my producer, Colin Sommer, to check my scalp if it's bleeding because I've been scratching my head quite a bit up here. So it'll be third. Third down at the Notre, uh, Notre Dame two. Third down. Third and goal from the Notre Dame three yard line. Vans, it's third From the down. three, didn't look like they moved the ball at all. Decor to the right of Desai. Dallas in the backfield. Quarterback keeper up the middle. He's short. Fourth down and goal. Milan Desai stopped by the Irish. A company of Notre Dame tacklers. Gain of one and a half. Fourth down. Goal to go from the two yard line. Under center to side. He is short. The Irish stop him. The stop of the season for the Irish on fourth and goal. Their hopes alive with 449. Hopewell tried to do a quick a quick snap and it backfired on him. AJ Serace, first down and 10 to go from his own one yard line is where he will set up shop. 449 left in the game. Notre Dame needed a stop all game and they got it finally. Notre Dame with the stop, they now take possession on their own one. 11 ticks, line. under five minutes remaining in this one. Irish trailing by six. Serace comes out onto the field. He has the play and breaks the huddle. Magliazzo and Pelzer, the receivers to the bottom of the screen. From his own end zone in the gun goes Serace. Quinn and Stefanisco at the top. Bulldogs showing pressure, eight in the box. Serace wants to throw, right side, complete. Quinn tries to slip a man, tackled around the four, brought down at the four yard line. Looks like they'll give him forward progress just short of the five. Second and seven. A little bit more room for Serace to work. Still. That's a lot of time still on the clock, Mike. Clock continues to tick. 
Kilcommon's a late substitution for the Irish. He takes over for Magliazzo. I think the Irish still have two timeouts left. It's a race in the gun with Winowich to the left. They'll feed Gabe. Bounces it left side. Slips a man. Cuts it back towards the middle. Down across the 10-yard line at the 11. Close to the first down. We'll see how they mark it. It's enough to move the sticks. And an Irish first down from their own 11-yard line. Four minutes and counting here in the fourth quarter. Winowich with a big time first down to move the sticks. Sarace takes his time. Giving out the play call. Breaks the huddle. Trips to the top of the screen. Kill Commons. The tight end at the bottom, he's to the left of Sarace Winowich to his right. Sarace takes the snap, fakes to Winowich, fires over the middle, it is caught! Quinn down at the 30, complete for a first down and then some. First down for the Irish on their own 30 yard line. RPO, they fake to Winowich, they connect to Quinn over the middle. First and 10 for Notre Dame. Sarace from his own 30. Winowich, play action again, quick hitter, caught. This time, Stefanisco, gain of five, caught at the 35-yard line. Second and five to go for Notre Dame. No huddle, go the Irish. 318 and counting. Here on second and five, Sarace to the huddle. Breaks it, has the play, he's ready. Trips to the bottom of the screen with Winowich to his left. Gets the snap, a high one. Fakes it, he's gonna keep it. He takes off up the middle. Sarace, there's a flag down at the 50, the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown, but there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. This one could be coming yeah, back. Sean Clancy with the head set off, almost halfway on the field, a slow walk towards the head official in Troy Stevenson. Illegal motion. Illegal motion against the Irish negates the score. Another unpopular call. No touchdown. Did you see who it was on by chance, Joe? No, I did not. I'll tell you what, with all the motion we've seen pre-snap on both sides to pick the fourth quarter of all times to start calling it, is an interesting strategy to say the least. We'll see if it pays off for him, Cotton. 254, second down and 10 to go. Don't forget that missed extra point is still looming. Clock stopped at 254. Kill Commons comes off, Magliazzo comes on. Sarace looking towards the sideline for the play call. He gets it and breaks the huddle. Split receiver set. Stefanisco and Quinn to the bottom. Magliazzo and Pelzer at the top. One of which to the left is a race. He wants to throw. Looking right. Fires. It is caught. Magliazzo reaches forward. Has the first down. Gain of 11 on the catch from Sarace to Magliazzo. It'll move the sticks as he was close to that out of, down, out of bounds line. I believe he was out. And stop the clock. First down and 10. 2.47. Now it's moving again, the clock is. They'll sweep it. Winowich splits a man. Up the middle. Fighting forward. Give him seven on the carry. Seven or eight yards. Second and a short three to go for Notre Dame. Two minutes and 30 seconds in this one. And rolling. Sarace gets the play call from the sideline. Same formation for the Irish. Winowich looking a bit tired to the left of Sarace in the backfield. Sarace takes the snap, fakes to Winowich, looking left side, lets it go, incomplete. Short of Michael Quinn, a far hash throw for Sarace. Third down, three yards to go. Four down territory for the Irish. A tired Gabe Winowich remains on the field, hands on his hips for the biggest third down of the night for the Irish offense, trailing 34 to 28. 2.13 remaining. I think it's either going to be Winowich or Sarace taking the ball right here. Sarace takes the snap. Winowich, right side, bowling his way, still on his feet, past the first down marker. He's got it. Four yards of hard earned yards carrying from Gabe Winowich. As Winowich points to the sideline, wanting a sub. Scipio toying, now comes on, Winowich comes off. First down and 10 to go from the Hopewell Valley 49, and a timeout taken by 
the officials down on the field. An injury timeout, I believe it is, as a Bulldog unable to get over to the sideline before falling to the turf with an apparent injury. Well, you said it earlier, Joe O'Gorman. If you got a seatbelt, you better it. buckle it. You got it. And if you don't have a seatbelt, you better find one. Hold on tight, folks. We're coming in for a landing. A wild fourth quarter. Two minutes and change remaining yep. in this fourth quarter. First down and 10 for the Irish from the Hopewell Valley 49 when action resumes. A rematch from last year's WJFL Capital Division Championship game. The 8-0 Irish putting their undefeated record on the line against the defending champs, the 6-1 Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. Timeout over down on the field. First and 10 for Serace and the offense. Scipio to his left, split receiver set. Quinn and Stefanisco to the bottom of the screen. It's been quite some time since we've called Tyler Stefanisco's name in this one. Serace looking left side, has pressure, lets it go deep. Once Quinn, he's got him, it's caught! 10-5, touchdown! Michael Quinn from A.J. Serace, 49 yards! 154 to go and the Irish an extra point away from taking the lead! What a throw from A.J. Serace! No flags! Just under two minutes remaining in this contest. And the Irish, an extra point away from their first lead of the night. And another injured Bulldog down on the field. It is Alan Patterson as he's been experiencing some cramping here tonight. Back down again is Patterson. Quinn was wide open over here on the left sideline. And Serace put it right where he had to. Injury timeout on the field means a timeout for us up here in the broadcast booth. 154 remaining in regulation. The extra point looming for the Irish. A 99 yard drive. After the 99 yard drive led by the future Rutgers Scarlet Knight and four-star prospect A.J. Serace. From his own one-yard line to pay dirt and a Scarborough extra point away from taking their first lead of the night. We'll take a quick break. 154 remaining in this one and the extra point looming. Knotted up at 34 apiece. You're watching the game of the year in Mercer County on the WBCB Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Action just about set to resume. The special teams unit, the extra point team, there's only two questions left, Mike. Can he make the extra point? And did they leave Hopewell Valley too much time? 154 remaining. Scarborough, perfect on the night. Another key that has to remember is, don't forget, Hopewell lost their kicker and Langle being hurt. So that might negate a real good field goal. Magliazzo on for the hold. Gets the snap. It's good. Kick is up. It's good! Scarborough nails the extra point, splits the upright. And for the first time tonight, the Irish lead. It's 35 to 14, 154 remaining. And as you mentioned, Joe, one question left to be answered. Is there too much time on the clock for Milan Desai and the Hopewell Valley offense? What a drive from the Irish, 99 yards and a little under four minutes.
And now, the biggest test of the night for both the Hopewell Valley offense and the Notre Dame defense. The Notre Dame defense didn't do much all night. It made the one stop it had to make. Sebastian Swiatek coming on to boot things away. Out to kick for the Irish, number 59, Sebastian Swiatek. Out to return Swiatek, to Valley, number 22, a touchback on his last attempt. Caldwell back to receive, Ellerby back there as well. A high, booming kick. Swiatek fielded at the one. Looks like Caldwell across the 15, tripped up at the 21-yard line. Big time tackle coming in on the special teams unit. First man to get there, that was Alexander Villarelli. And a flag comes in. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Irish. <laughs> And again, for all the celebration that's gone on here tonight, I didn't for see what all it was. of the, the chippiness, the talking, the, the jawing, whatever you may, it, it's, it's led to the fourth quarter for the most questionable flags to be thrown. And that is a flag that you simply just do not have to throw. Nonetheless, it bodes positively for Hopewell Valley as they can run a sub two minute offense. 150 remaining. Decor in the backfield to the right of Desai. Split receiver set. Scipio playing a bit off of the bottom receiver. Dropping back to Desai, he wants to throw. Kill Commons being held on the left side. Here comes the flag. Winowich, a huge hit on Desai as he gets that one away. But here comes the holding penalty against Hopewell Valley. Both Kill Commons and Napier were held on that play. The flag coming all the way in from the umpire in the secondary. <laughs> Holding on Hopo Valley. Just glad somebody saw it. It was pretty blatant. It'll be first and 15 for the Bulldogs. First down and 15. Sets them back just a little bit. First down and 20, actually. Hopewell Valley tonight. Now. Hopewell Valley has had their way offensively tonight. Looking for a drive here for six. Pass intended and batted out of the air. Andy Zigwo bats it away. Second down. for the Irish. It's second and 15. Zigbo fired up after he bats that one out of the air. Fans getting into it. 138 remaining. Second down and 20 yards to go for Hopewell Valley. The spirit at the uh, Irish defense has been all night. Irish, four down linemen. Winowich coming off the edge. Pass over the middle. Batted out of the air by Bailey and complete. Third and 20. Nearly intercepted multiple defenders in the area, both Scipio and Cam Bailey. And this is the biggest third down of the night. Third and 20 for Hopewell Valley. They've converted on third and 14. Third and 12. Fourth and 11. Irish sideline imploring the hooligans to make some noise. 134 remaining. Irish clinging on to a one point lead to Sai. Gets the snap. Looks left. Let's it go. Picked yeah. off. Bailey intercepted. Cam Bailey with a big time pick. And that should do it for the Irish. Yes, and a flag will. comes in late. An Irish defender took their helmet off before making it to the sideline. As this is a penalty against the Irish. It's not going to negate an interception. Oh, the penalty has no bearing. Pass from number eight, Milan Desai, intercepted by number seven, Cam Bailey. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Irish will set them back 15 yards. Serace on the offense comes back out onto the field. A couple of kneel downs away and a couple of runs away from securing this one. 
Yeah, Hoopal has, I think, all three of their timeouts left, but I don't think that they're going to be able to, you know, Notre Dame gets a couple good plays, it's over. To race from the gun with Winowich to his left. Two receivers at the bottom. He motions Winowich now to his right. Takes the snap. Keeper. To race on his own. Left side. Cross the 50. Barreled down. Caldwell in on the stop. He's across the 50 yard line. They'll spot him at the 47. And a timeout taken by Hopewell Valley. They have two remaining. First time out taken from Hopewell Valley. Two left in this one. Everybody, get on your feet. What a game this has been. The game of the year in Mercer County. The game of the year on the WBCB Sports Network alongside the esteemed Mercer County journalist Joe O'Gorman. My name is Mike Warren. For those of you just joining us, what a game we've had here tonight from game, Nolan Field. The game has lived up to the hype, Mike. That Had a has. little bit of everything. Certainly one of the most exciting fourth quarters you'll ever see. The Irish defensively on third and 20, coming up with a huge interception from outside linebacker Cam Bailey. He gave the Irish possession back. Second down and a short two to go. So race with Winowich to his left. They'll give it to Gabe. Lunging forward. He's got the first down. That should take care of it. You know, you have, you have to give Hopewell a lot of credit. They came in here and played fabulous. They really did. You know, Hopewell Valley was up to the task tonight. Yes, they were. Hopewell Valley, that's their second of the half. They have you talk about remaining. executing a winning game plan. Yep. Hopewell Valley did that tonight. Yep. Notre Dame just yep. so happened to come up with the biggest stop of the night and the biggest moment of the night when they needed it the most. They were one yard short of probably stealing a win here. Here we go, first and 10, yep. clock stopped. One same, minute and nine seconds remaining. Same token, you have to credit the Notre Dame defense for that goal line stand. The defense coming up with two of the biggest stops of the season in this game tonight. So race victory formation takes a knee. A lot of pushing and shoving up front. So race takes the knee down, loses about two. It's second and 12. Second down and 12. Clock continues to tick. Doesn't look like Hopewell Valley is going to take any more timeouts. No, I, I think they understand that it's not going to benefit them. They have two downs to just take a knee, and that would be it. One final kneel down for Sarais. Victory formation under center. He kneels down, and the comeback complete for the Irish. Final seconds tick off here from Nolan Field. The Irish trailed by as many as 14 after a year ago losing in dominant fashion to Hopewell Valley, 53 to 21. The 2023-24 West Jersey Football League Capital Division Champions, your Notre Dame Irish. They did what they had to do, but they escaped with a win, Mike. Notre Dame improves to 9-0 on the season, and they avenge their loss in this same exact game a season ago. A.J. Serace, a 99-yard game-winning drive to seal the victory after his junior year going 14 for 21 with a touchdown and an interception, getting out-dueled by Tim McEwen, Serace gets his team the victory in the biggest game of the season here on WBCB. What a performance from the future Rutgers Scarlet Knight, and what a win for the Irish of Notre Dame as they improve to 9-0 on the season. Joe, any final thoughts on this one? No, it's just a great game. You know, both teams, in, in all honesty, both teams deserve to win. Hopewell did what, did what they had to do. Notre Dame had a big defensive stand, and that was the difference. 
I want to thank all of our sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible. Team Toyota, Notre Dame High School, Cade Motor Company, All Cure Spine and Sports, New Jersey Education Association, Revere Restaurant, Alderman Ford Subaru, Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, the Capital Health System, the 12th Man Touchdown Club of Mercer County, the Jammer Door and Window Company, the Trentonian, the Italian People's Bakery, Hyundai of Trenton, all proud to bring you today's coverage here on WBCB. For my broadcast partner, Joe O'Gorman, producer of today's stream, Colin Sommer. One final time, the Irish improve to 9-0 on the season as they capture the Western Jersey Football League Capital Division title with a one-point victory over the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs. For my broadcast partner, Joe O'Gorman, my name is Mike Warren. Thank you once again for watching high school football on the WBCB Sports Network. Until we talk to you again next week, we thank you so much for tuning in to Mercer County Football on the WBCB Sports Network. Have a great night, everybody.